College Game Day Bowl Special is presented by Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Boston College Boise State coming up. The swan song for Dan Hawkins, who's moving on to Colorado after this game. Lou, should he be coaching Boise State in this one? Oh, I respect him tremendously, but no, I don't think he ought to be coaching. I think the offensive coordinator, Chris Peterson, ought to, because you don't have to live with the consequences. When this game's over, win or lose or draw, he leaves. Get out of Dodge. You should go to Colorado <laughs> right now, talk to those kids, and let them lick their wounds. They just lost the bowl game against Clemson. Get ready for the next step. Get to Colorado. He's been working both camps a little bit. His finale as head coach of Boise State coming up now. Welcome to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Ah, tis the season when you're everywhere at once. And then, all at once, it opens. A window to unwind from the rush. Some time to cherish and to cheer. And if you couldn't get there, stay here with us. The Boston College Eagles against the Boise State Broncos in the MTC Computers Bowl. We made this holiday trip for you. The Broncos made no travel plans, and that's how they like it. Staying home where they've won 31 straight. But the Eagles have landed with a streak of their own. Five bowl wins in a row for BC. Small school from the Northwest. Big school from the Northeast. Boise has the bright blue battleground for the MTC Computers Bowl. Boston College, two teams meeting for the very first time in school history. And we are so thrilled you could join us here in Boise, Idaho, alongside Andre Ware. I am Eric Collins. Heather Cox will join us in just a couple of moments. Well, the big story in this game, Boise State head coach Dan Hawkins coaching his final game here at the Broncos. He is off to take over the Colorado Buffaloes program in Boulder, Colorado. But maybe Boise State fans shouldn't fret too much because the brain behind this explosive offense here in Boise State is sticking around. Chris Peterson will be the new head coach. Yeah, Pete's poisons what this offense and these parts have been referred to. Talk about a little bit of West Coast offense, sprinkle in some spread, and you've got success offensively for the Bo for uh, Boise State. You talk about they've done it a little bit differently though. Usually when you think Boise State, you think of receivers running around making a lot of plays. These four guys have basically carried the load at running back, led by Lee Marks. Uh, just over 700 yards this season. So a little bit different approach for Boise State offensively, but success nonetheless. Boise State, you think offense, Boston College, you think defense, and this year more the same. Yeah. Matthias Kiwanuka, their end, he may be the best defender in the history of BC's football program. Yeah, and he may be the highest player drafted from BC from that program once he's done there. You talk about a, a, an athlete who can basically just take over a football game defensively. BC's all-time leader. In fact, we got a chance to see him against North Carolina State a couple of weeks ago. Three and a half sacks in that ball game. It seemed like six and a half sacks because he made plays all over the field all night long flying under the radar is his ability to play against the run he'll have to play well against the run against this good boise state offense it'll be a whole heck of a lot of fun to watch stick around everybody it's the mpc computers bowl boise state taking on boston college while other stores have sales all the time we offer low prices all year long. So when we do have a sale, our prices are a lot lower than other stores. Right now, over half our suits and sport coats are on sale. Plus hundreds of pants, sweaters, shoes, shirts, and outerwear. 20 to 50% off. Which means the only way to beat a men's warehouse price is at the men's warehouse winter sale. I guarantee it. Open New Year's Day. Call 1-800-776-SUITS. Everyone has a holiday wish list. At GMC's Red Tag event, we have a list of our own. 
better V8 fuel economy, more standard horsepower, and incredible red tag offers. With GMC's red tag pricing, the price on our tag is the price you pay, not a penny more. Or get 0% APR for 72 months on every 05 and 06 Yukon. Everything on GMC's list points to putting professional-grade engineering on yours. See your GMC dealer before it ends January 3rd. It's due, so call now. Welcome back to Boise, Idaho. So glad you could join us. This is the MTC Computers Bowl, pitting WAC against ACC. Boise State on the year, 9-3 and three on the campaign, 7-1 and one to win the Western Athletic Conference. Underneath that man, Dan Hawkins, who is coaching his final game ever at Boise State, 53-10 and 10 in five years on the sideline with the Broncos. Now let's welcome in the third member of our crew, Heather Cox, down on the sidelines. Heather, what's going on? Well, today matches up a team with incredible bowl success. Boston College owns the nation's longest win streak. They've won five consecutive bowl games. But they go up against a Boise State team that has the nation's longest home win streak. They've won 31 consecutive games here at home. Now Boston College knows it enters hostile territory. Over 28,000 of the 30,000 expected today will be clad in orange and black. Now, Boise State averages 47 points per game here at home, but Boston College has allowed just 14 offensive touchdowns all season long. So, Eric, today it's a battle of the streak, and something's got to give. Thank you so much, Heather. Well, Dan Hawkins, as we mentioned, he is off after this game. He will hand over the keys to the offense and the entire program to his offensive coordinator, Chris Peterson. And he has been a real revelation here in Boise. Chris Peterson has done some real interesting things coming out of that uh, coordinator's booth up in the press box. Yeah, he really has. I mean, you talk about being uh, imaginary in terms of what he can do offensively. He likes to spread you around. He'll let, shuffle in a lot of different personnel groupings. A lot of different receivers will play in this game. We already talked about four running backs who will make their mark on this one, led by Lee Marks, who, did, who ran for over 700 yards. So they do it running back by committee, but it's a lot of success offensively for Boise State. Tom O'Brien will be the counterpart on the sideline for Boston College. Tom O'Brien, one of those guys that's playing chess when everyone else is playing checkers. Now in nine seasons at Boston College, second most amount of wins in school history. And this is their seventh consecutive bowl appearance, and they do very well in bowls. They've won five consecutive bowl games, and this time they'll try and get it done with sophomore starting quarterback Matt Ryan, who is came into the starting spot just a couple of weeks ago. He yeah. began the season as the number two guy behind Quentin Porter. Basically, they wanted a spark offensively, and Matt Ryan has basically provided that for them. They scored, they, they had just two yards more in, in a win over North Carolina State, and, and, and when you compare the, the yards against North, uh, North Carolina, University of North Carolina, but they had 16, 14 points in that football game, 30 points against North Carolina State, so he adds the productivity, the spark that they were looking for offensively at BC. Dan Hawkins and Boise State, they won the toss. They have deferred. They will kick off. And Boston College will start on offense. Boston College, they have played just two WAC teams in the history of their program, but never Boise State. Here's Will Blackman, a sensational open field runner. He will get his hands on the football first, presumably. We had rain, we had lots of wind, cold temperatures over the last couple of days, but right now things are clear here in Boise, Idaho. Once again, the ball comes off the tee, so we're 0 for 2 so far in kickoff attempts. Boise State on the year. 9-3, and three, including a 7-1 and one mark in Western Athletic Conference play. Boston College, 8-3, and three, including a 5-3 and three mark in their first goal round in ACC action. And now, we're off. Will Blackman settles underneath it, and he's going to bring it out from four yards deep. Blackman with room across the 25, out past the 30. How about that for an energizing play? Will Blackman getting it done. When well, you talk about a senior playing in his final game, and he adds the electricity a guy that moved over from the defensive side of the football. 
Offensively, this is how Boston College lines up. They are tremendously large and talented up front. They have three all-ACC performers, second-teamers, in True Blood, Ross, and Beekman up front. Receivers. Blackman, you just saw him. He's the open field threat. Larry Lester is very consistent. And in the backfield, we see a combination of L.B. Whitworth and Andre Callender. Mark Palmer is back after an injury suffered in midseason. And first carry of the game goes to Whitworth. And Whitworth was a very positive run out close to the 40-yard line. Gain of 14 yards. Defensively, Boise State. They are strong in the middle. Their tackles, Browning and Guerrero, they are real difference makers in the run game. Linebackers, Corey Hall, an all-whack performer. Colt Brooks is an exciting performer as well on the outside. And in the secondary, Austin Smith and Marty Cadman, they will come up and hit you from their safety spots. Orlando Scandrick, he is just 18 years old and starting as a true freshman on the corner. Get it out to Blackman out in the flat, and Blackman scoops out across the 50-yard line, a pickup of seven to two. Very good offensive plays to begin this game for Boston College. Yeah, you're talking about mixing the run with a pass, and that's what they like to do. Keep you off balance here. Very, very balanced football team, run and pass ratio, and staying in second down and medium, second down and short is what they want to do at Boston College. Uh, Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator. Second down. All right at midfield. Ryan drops back, wants to throw. Pocket collapse, gets out, uses those good feet, and he's got positive yards. A pickup of almost 10 yards, call it nine. Well, you talk about a guy that really competes at the highest level. Look at this protection, the big guys up front. You can sit in there all day long, just collapses it right there. Now you got the ability with Matt Ryan to escape outside. You'll see it here again. Just good coverage, good, good drops and zone coverage there by Boise State defensively, and Matt Ryan making things happen with his legs. Fresh set of downs. First and ten for the Eagles. Delayed handoff. Goes to Whitworth. Sticks his nose in there and picks up a couple. Gain of three for the sophomore from Milton, Massachusetts. Well, they are big across the front. Those big five guys up front for Boise, excuse me, for Boston College. The average size, 6'6", 314. The, the tallest in the heaviest in the ACC. And I'll tell you, they're probably the tallest and heaviest in a whole lot of conferences around the country. And the Tom O'Brien's bunch, they will be the largest, most powerful team that Boise State will have to deal with this entire year. Another handoff. Whitworth brought down by a shoestring. He had a real opening there, but he does pick up six. It'll bring up a third down and short. Colt Brooks was the man who tripped him up. Yeah, both guys start Whitworth and then Callender. They feel like they really have two starters at tailback. But look at the tremendous push for uh, L.B. Whitworth. And in there, it's just hitting the hole and committing to it front side. A lot of success when you get north and south. They've got their uh, short yardage specialist in there, Brian Cole. At tailback. And Cole has the football. And Cole has the first down. That's what he does. He's normally their starting one of their starting linebackers. But in short yardage situations, he is nearly unstoppable. Yeah, he's had suffered from a shoulder injury, so he'll be limited defensively. But uh, he's, he's well enough to get in there in short yardage situations. They call it first and pole at, uh, on the campus of Boston College. So he is very successful in their short yardage package. So Matt Ryan in the offense with BC, a fresh set of downs. Maybe a little bit of concern on the face of Dan Hawkins as his defense is getting beaten up early. Ryan with time. Throws out and throws high. Well, that's going to draw a flag. A little personal foul. Late hit. The ball was well over Will Blackman's head. And then coming in late, cornerback Orlando Skandrick. And so this one will be, uh, they'll tack some yardage on here. Be first down for Boston College. Now inside uh, the red zone. So the troubles continue for the Broncos of Boise State. Disregard the flag. There is no foul on the play. Second down. Well, it showed up. You see the little out route here by Will Blackman, and the ball is well over his head. They're just, uh, maybe. Maybe you call that one, maybe not. If you let that one go and, and they did bring up second down the officiating crew led by referee claire gossman they are from the big 12 conference 
So an independent crew coming in and officiating this game between WAC member Boise State and ACC member Boston College. Second down and 10. Ryan again to throw with time. Dumps it off. Whitworth has it. And Whitworth falls forward for a pickup of seven. Boy, a deep, deep zone drops by Boise State. And Matt Ryan does a fabulous job seeing coverage. Well, you see the drop here, and then eyes down the field. Nobody's open because such deep drops. And they're just flipping it out to his, uh, to his tailback, L.B. Whitworth. Tony Gonzalez has checked into the game for Boston College as a slot receiver. They throw to Lester, and this pass is incomplete. Looking for Lester near the corner pylon. It'll bring up a fourth down situation. Good defense played by Gerald Alexander. So a decision time now for Boston College. Well, they it's struggled. It's down and four. Yeah. This would be a 41-yard field goal if they attempted it. They struggled a little bit in the kicking game uh, this season. So, you know, down the distance here early in the football game, not a bad decision by Tom O'Brien going for it. A lot of confidence in his defense as well. They need to get inside the 20-yard line. Ryan wants to throw. Flushed out. Sets up, throws deep, has a man wide open. Touchdown, Gonzalez. How about that for a pitch and catch on fourth down and four? Boy, I tell you, Matt Ryan, the young sophomore quarterback, is cool and collected as any we've seen this season. Buying himself some time. Receivers, zone drops by Boise State. Good in coverage, and then there, all of a sudden, peeking wide open is Tony Gonzalez continuing the work in the scramble drill for his quarterback, Matt Ryan. And boy, he was rewarded in a huge way. Touchdown number four on the year for Gonzalez. Extra point by Ryan Oliger is true. And so on the first possession of the game, Boston College marches down the field and scores a touchdown. And a flag has come down late on the field. Well, what a way to... And his crew sorting this one out. Yeah, what a way to get started is your Boston College Extra offensively. Point is good. Dead ball, personal foul, number 72, kicking team. 15-yard penalty will be administered on the kickoff. So Tom O'Brien, probably not too pleased with the penalty, but you can't argue with the results of that drive. A 24-yard touchdown pass, Matt Ryan to Tony Gonzalez. You're quite right in thinking that this is a situation that calls for an absurd British comedy. Drain the pool, get on your board, and wall plant three times. And lose the scarves. How's that? Want incredible entertainment experiences in your lap? Get Intel Centrino mobile technology in your laptop. This is the one I was telling you about. Dude, you can get that same one online for like 120 properties. With all the delicious 99 cent choices on Wendy's Super Value menu, you'll see dollars in a whole new way. There you go. 75 Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers. For 99 cents, get Wendy's famous Junior Bacon Cheeseburger made fresh, hot off the grill. Crispy chicken nuggets or our new Junior Barbecue Cheeseburger, all on Wendy's Super Value menu. Honey, you look like a million crispy chicken nuggets. Do Wendy's, and for 99 cents, do what tastes right. Good call, Fred. Pick up some 1855 Lager, our tribute to Fred's first beer. This December, Nissan's got you covered from A to Z. Nissan's A to Z year-end sales event. Get year-end deals on Altima, Armada, Frontier, Maxima, Murano, Pathfinder, Quest, Sentra, Titan, Xterra, Z. Like 2,000 cans back on the Nissan Xterra. 2006 Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. Style, performance, sound, from A to Z. Oh, yeah. A different kind of New Year's Eve countdown. 11.30.
11 p.m. on ESPN2. Hi, and welcome to the MTC Computers Bowl, also known as that bowl game played on the blue field. We're really proud this year to have two great teams in our bowl game with Boston College and Boise State. But most of all, all of us here at MTC Computers are glad that you're here. So sit back, relax, grab some blue chips and blue cheese and blueberry pie, and enjoy that bowl game played on the blue field, the MTC Computers Bowl. Hey, who's ready for a burger? Well, so far, the Boston College Eagles enjoying their time here in uh, the capital city of Idaho. They marched down the field and scored a touchdown on their opening possession. After the penalty is assessed, the kickoff only goes to the 15-yard line. On the return, here come the Broncos. And they get it out close to the 40-yard line. Boise State offensively, they are explosive. They are the eighth rated offense in the entire country. And it starts up front. Darren College making his 52nd consecutive start. That is a school record. Receivers, we'll see about eight different receivers, but the starters, Gerard Rabb leads the team in receptions. Dryson James is a big play threat. Derek Schumann is a tight end that they use a lot in the passing game. And Jared Zabransky, he's had a, a roller coaster type season. He will have four different running backs at his disposal. So start with all wax second teamer Lee Marks in the backfield behind him as the sole setback. Man in motion is Gerard Rabb, and they give to Marks. Marks with the carry. Lowers the head, gets across midfield. Heck of a way to start the game for Boise State offensively. A pickup of 13 yards. Vinny Peretta, a nice block out on the edge. Defensively, Boston College. You talk so much about Kiwanuka, but he gets help on the inside. C.J. Raji and Alvin Washington, they both are great at stuffing the run inside. Jolon Dunbar starts ahead of Brian Cole, who's got a bit of a shoulder, but we will see him at some point. And in the defensive backfield, Jasmine Williams, Dewan Tribble are the corners. Jamie Silva, though, leads the team in tackles from his safety spot. Ian Johnson in the game is the tailback, but they throw for the first time, and the pass is complete to Legadu Nene. Well, you won't see any backup in this Boise State offense or this football team. They've got, they, they were scored on first, but good mix so far of run and pass. Just a nice little hitch route, spin it down outside about six yards, reading the inside guy, number 55, Ricky Brown. He stays inside, shoot it out there quickly to your wide receiver. And boy, being in second down and, and short gives you a lot of different things you can go to. This drive very similar to the opening drive by Boston College just a moment ago. Inside handoff, Mark has it, and Mark refusing to go down until he crosses the 35-yard line and a pickup of seven yards. Well, you talk about College making his 52nd start with Miller, Tad Miller, Jeff Cavender, Woodruff, and Claddy up front. You see the big holes pulling guys around, stealing off outside, and boy, I tell you what, the little guy, Lee Mark, not big, 5'7", 181 pounds, known for his ability to get outside there, running between the tackles. Ian Johnson, behind Zabransky. They fake to him. Zabransky wants to throw. Has a man, but he doesn't throw it far enough. It is picked off. Coming back the other way, interception made by Jamie Silva. Yeah, he's trying to go to his tight end, Derek Schumann, and he got tremendous pressure in his face. Play action pass when you're running the football well, and Ricky Brown in the face of Jared Zabransky forces him to throw this a little bit early, wasn't able to step into the throw and get enough on it. The end result's an interception, but boy, the pressure by Ricky Brown made that play for Boston College. It's actually Ryan Glasper with the interception. And Glasper returns it 12 yards. So a promising start yeah. offensively for Boise State goes by the wayside. And the Eagles have the ball back on the 31-yard line. Matt Ryan under duress. Goes down deep in his own backfield. Sack is made by the big fella. Defensive tackle coming in and making the play. Alex Guerrero. 
Big number 99. Finally, he gets in pressure from the inside, and that's between the big, massive part of that offensive line. You see him here working in the center of your screen, continuing, then right around the outside, he's going to come free to Matt Ryan. Boy, that is determination right there, working against a guy that's a lot larger than you, but continuing to pursue to the quarterback gets you a sack like that there uh, from Alex Guerrero. Loss of eight yards on the play. First carry of the game for Andre Callender. It's a good one. He picks up what they lost and then some as he scoots across the 35-yard line. A gain of 13 yards before he's finally tripped up by Marty Cadman. Boy, he gets a big, big hole right in the center of the formation right here, the underneath handoff, and then he's going to see it right back to the outside. And north and south is what they expect from Andre Callender. They rotate him in there. Whitworth we saw early in the football game. Now Callender, they feel like they have two starters at tailback at Boston College. Third down at four. You need to get to the 41-yard line to keep this drive alive. And they will. Pass is complete, cutting across the middle and making the catch. Jason Lilly. And Lilly has a first down and a pickup of five yards. Well, that's what happens when defenses start to drop deep in zone coverage. You can run those delayed little drag routes across the field. And Jason Lilly times it up just right with Matt Ryan. You're going to see it here. He's going to drag underneath. And right there, the deep drops by, Bo by Boise State. Matt Ryan right on time with the football in the soft spot of the coverage allows for his receiver to turn up field and pick up the first down. Ryan gives to Callender. And Callender barrels forward. Crosses the 45 out to about the 47-yard line. Pick up about five yards. Well, it just seems like defensively, at Boise State, going to sit in a lot of zone coverage, and Matt Ryan's going to be asked this football game to be very patient. You're going to have to hit some check downs, hit the underneath routes to move this team in the passing game until you can get them out of those deep drops, bring them up in some man coverage. Then you'll have some opportunity over the top. Looking for Larry Lester. The pass is knocked down. Good defensive play made to stop what would have been a big game. Corey Hall is the man who got his hand up and knocked the pass down. Yeah, there. I thought that's the first pass of this ball game. Try to force one into Larry Lester. You'll see it here. Nice play action fake with the football. Right there, just forcing one in. Pause it right there. You see about three different guys for Boise State around the football. That's a bad decision on the young quarterback's call. They just talked about the patience he must display throughout this ball game plan and a lot of playing against a lot of zone coverage. Here comes the blitz on third down, and Ryan has his pass knocked away. And a flag comes down. Orlando Skandrick came off the edge like his hair was on fire and got to Ryan quickly. Yeah, they come with a corner blitz. And, I mean, he was coming, and, and when you have your back to the defense, you got to know there's a clock in the back of your mind. I've held it a little bit too long. Somebody's going to come free sooner or later. And boy, they're going to pick up a penalty here for intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. The offense, spot foul, lost it down, fourth down. Right there, we talk about all the zone, all the zone coverage that Dan Hawkins and his defense is playing. But right here, you're going to see right off the edge, Orlando Scandrick coming full speed on a corner blitz. Finally, they dial it up, trying to confuse Matt Ryan a little bit, make him think we're going to play and sit in zone coverage, bring a little pressure off the corner from the short side of the field, and they get there. Kind of hard to tell whether or not Matt Ryan is just trying to throw it away. As he was trying to throw it, he got to get outside that tackle box or at least get the football back to the line of scrimmage. Johnny Ayers comes on to punt for the first time in this game for Boston College. Dangerous man awaits it. Quinton Jones, second in the country in return. He has the football. And Jones with room. Jones finally slides down, but not before a very good return out to the 47-yard line. A return of 16 yards. So Jared Zabransky will bring that Boise State Bronco offense back on the field to take on Matthias Kiwanika and BC. We see you building a new company. From an old company. Turning vision into reality. Into success. We see you. We see your potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. 
there couldn't be a better time to get an ADT home security system because this holiday, you can get a special offer. Save up to $200 on ADT's protection packages. You may save up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. ADT is the number one security company in America, particularly at the holidays, with the threat of fire hazards and more families traveling, leaving their homes empty. So call now and take advantage of ADT's holiday special. ADT, always there. This December, Nissan's got you covered from A to Z. Nissan's A to Z year-end sales event. Get year-end deals on Altima, Armada, Frontier, Maxima, Murano, Pathfinder, Quest, Sentra, Titan, Xterra, Z. Like a $1.99 per month lease on Altima with a special edition package at your Nissan dealer now. Style, performance, value. From A to Z. Now on DVD, you're going to band camp. Where are your clothes? American Pie presents... You see slippers down the better, aren't you? Oh, she seems nice. Band camp on an all-new unrated DVD. Unwrap it today. of the 2005 MPC Computers Bowl and in part by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. There's some salmon in them their water. That's the Boise River, just uh, about, uh, I don't know, 200 yards away from Bronco Stadium. This is an absolutely gorgeous corner of the earth. Saw a little fly fishing going on over there as we oh, sure. came into the stadium yesterday. And Boise State will start on offense for the second time in the game. Jared Zabransky had his pass intercepted by Ryan Glassford to end the last drive. They were moving before the pick. Zabransky wants to throw. Flag flies before the ball is snapped. Jared Zabransky now in his second season as the starting quarterback. Junior out of Hermiston, Oregon. Grew up on a potato farm out there. Both start. Offense number four, five yards. Repeat first down. Zabransky working hand-in-hand -hand with Dan Hawkins and, of course, the offensive coordinator, Chris Peterson, yeah. over the last couple of years. Really an up-and-down year for Zabransky. I mean, he got off to that rough start, six turnovers against Georgia. And Chris Peterson, they have really stuck with him his fifth season as the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach here. He'll be the head coach next year here at Boise State, so it makes for an easy transition offensively for this program. Penalty puts him back five yards. First down at 15. Movement on the line. No whistle, no flag. On the carry, Lee Marks picks up about what they lost. Pick up about four yards. For more, Chris Peterson, let's go down to the field and Heather Cox. Heather? Eric, Coach Peterson told me his psychology degree has come to good use this season. He's worked diligently with Jared Zabransky after that auspicious season that Andre just talked about, that debut against Georgia. Now, Coach Pete told Zabransky he was making the game way too important, trying to do too much and putting too much pressure on himself. And Coach Peterson said throughout this learning process, Jared has matured and learned to rely on his teammates more and not feel solely responsible. Well, today, already an interception in that first series. We'll see how much Coach Pete's therapy has helped him in this game. Thank you, Heather. Obviously, the mental part of the game is so important as the quarterback. Pass dumped off. Jeff Carpenter, his first catch of the game, coming out of the backfield. Crosses the 50, pick up of eight. It'll bring up a third down and four. Boy, he's had a lot of wins on the blue turf here at Boise State. 60% passer for his career, 34 touchdowns. 28 interceptions. He'd like to cut that down, way down next season. But, boy, he is a fierce, fierce competitor this year. 17 touchdown passes on the season to go along with now 15 interceptions. So you, you start cutting that in, the back end of that off in interceptions, you make for a lot more success as a quarterback. Third down and four. Zabransky flushed out of the pocket. He's got fantastic feet. Makes one man miss. 
and maybe a little bit too cute. I think he had the first down, Andre, and then he gave it up. Yeah, he's, he's got be short. He's basically got to be aware of where the down and distance mark is. As the quarterback, you know what you know where on the field you got to get to. You see Matthias Kiwanuka working upfield in the pass rush. He fields it. Zabranski steps up in the pocket, which is exactly what you want to do. That's a matchup we really need to keep our eyes on. Darren College and Kiwanuka working one-on-one. -on -one. Two very, very good, experienced football players. But there, Zabranski had the first down, threw one move too many, and it came up about half a yard short. But Dan Hawkins is elected to go for it. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. Dan Hawkins, he's a riverboat gambler. He's going to oh, hold yeah. this every single time. You know, when you talk about Dan Hawkins, he doesn't show up in a stadium uh, hoping to win. He is going to he's going to empty everything in the bag on the field and in, ter in terms of trying to pull out a win. He, he, he doesn't play not to lose. He plays to win football games. They're going to review this spot. This is actually the first time that instant replay has been used here at Bronco Stadium. Boise State, normally the home team here, they are a member of the WAC, and the WAC does not have instant replay, but in every bowl game this year, there is replay. So we're going to take and make sure that spot is accurate. Right, you're going to see him here north and south, and if he keeps going this way as opposed to east and west, he's going to pick up the first down, but he comes back even a little, about another yard, two yards after having picked up the first down. Boy, you see the, the, the drop here, just as you're supposed to do, step up and outside in the pocket. There's the first down marker. He was across and then came backwards two yards. So this play is under review. Indisputable video evidence needs to confirm that the call was incorrect, that the spot was incorrect. And so communication being made with the technical advisor up here in the press box. In one of two conferences, the WAC, along with the Sun Belt Conference, did not use replay this season. Next season in 06, the WAC will adopt uh, the instant replay system. So uh, they're not used to this this season yet, but they may as well go ahead and get a taste of it for next year. The technical advisor and the replay crew are also members of the Big 12 Conference. Coming out here to officiate this MTC Computers Bowl. Well, you can see it here, the, the rush by Kiwanuka. You'll see Zabranski step up and outside. And then we'll show you right here, if you pause it, right there. He's got the first down and then comes backwards. He had he was right across the first down marker and then came back two yards. He wasn't knocked back. No, he no, he, he actually it. trying to make a guy miss. He came back. After review, the football is spotted at the 43-yard line. We will have a measurement. So, good call by Dan Hawkins or the officials, and then they review it. And then they wind up with a first down here. I tell you, it is awfully close since they reached the re-spot. So the chains come across the field. It's either going to be fourth and inches or a first down for Boise State offensively. And we got it. That's why we have the uh, instant replay, so we get it right. So Dan Hawkins, I'm sure he would have went for it on fourth and inches. Doesn't have to make that decision. Fresh set of downs for Jared Zabranski and the Bronco offense. That's me. Zabranski may have gotten away with one right there. So first down and 10. Ball on the 43-yard line. Couple of tight ends in the game now for Boise State. Lee Marks is the deep back behind Zabranski. And Marks has it. Tries to the right side. He stretched out. Makes a nice forceful cut. And gets across the 40-yard line for a pickup of four. Well, tonight, ESPN's bowl doubleheader continues when the Michigan Wolverines take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers in the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. That's at 8 Eastern time. The MasterCard Alamo Bowl is part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. This is only the fourth time that these two tradition-rich programs will ever meet on the gridiron. Yeah, a lot of tradition between those two, the Nebraska and Michigan. That'll be an outstanding football game. Little trickery. End around. Nothing doing. Trying to get the ball on the perimeter, and they lose four yards. Four-yard loss, good defensive play by Ricky Brown. Boy, just trying to capitalize on the speed of Quentin Jones. He's the fastest player in Boise State in, to come through the program. 
clock at 4-3 in the 40, and trying to find a way to get him on the edge. He talks a lot about him in terms of punt returns, averages over 20 yards a punt. Named second team All-American in some, uh, some, some post, I think it was college football news that named him uh, second team All-American. Third down at 12, Tiwanuka pressuring Zabransky. Zabransky gets it off, and it is complete along the sideline, close to first down yards. It's going to depend on the spot. Nice pitch and catch under duress. Boy. Tiwanuka breathing hard down Zabransky's neck, but Vinny Peretta able to make the catch along the sideline. A lot of pressure here by Tiwanuka. You see him spin inside. He's going to have to chase from inside out. And Zabransky, look at this throw. Athletic ability, throwing on the run, and he throws a strike to his receiver and almost picks up the first down here just a couple yards short. But watch the throw. Watch it come off of his hands with a lot of velocity, accuracy, right along the sidelines. Fantastic throw and catch. Fourth down and one, and the Broncos are going to go for it. Giving it to the power back, and Antoine Carter is stoned. He's not going to get there, and the ball is going to change hands. Well, he's the second leading rusher. Antoine Carter at 435 yards and known as their short yardage specialist for Boston College. Not going to have it. So, Boise State, two trips into BC territory, and they're denied on both times. Some beers have a full taste, but are too filling. Some beers are easy to drink, but don't satisfy. Then, there's Budweiser Select. Made from only the finest hand-picked American and Bavarian hops. Budweiser Select is brewed longer for a bold taste that finishes clean. Everybody has their something, but Budweiser Select has it all. Time in Paradise. The PGA Tour is back on ESPN. It's a brand new season and the tour's finest are looking to make their mark in Maui. Can two-time defending Mercedes champ Stuart Appleby make it a tropical trifecta? The winners only field of PGA Tour champions, including BJ Singh, have their sights set on a victory in the white. How about that? Who will be golf's big kahuna? The Mercedes Championship. Live coverage begins Thursday, January 5th at 7. <laughs> hey, is Hi, it? I'm Ryan. Hi, I'm Sarah. Will you marry me? Yes, and we'll live in the country. <laughs> Some people hate to wait. Sign up for Comcast High Speed Internet today and download whatever you want faster than ever before. At ridiculously quick speeds, it's way faster than DSL and dial-up. Sign up today and start doing more things online faster. Just call 1-888-COMCAST. Comcast High Speed Internet. It's Comcastic. Because right now at Advantage Chevrolet, when you see red, you save green. During the year-end red tag sales event going on now, the end of the year is the best time to save on all the great new Chevrolets in stock. With huge rebates, special red tag pricing, and available low financing, now is the time. How about an 06 Equinox LT for just $17,944 or an 06 Silverado Z83 for just $15,986? Advantage Chevrolet is conveniently located on the corner of Jolie at LaGrange Road in the Countryside Auto Mall. Sale ends January 3rd. Welcome back to Bronco Stadium here in Treasure Valley. This neck of the woods here in the gem state of Idaho called Treasure Valley. A lot of natural gems, a lot of different things to be mined and explored here in Boise, Idaho. And one of the finer things has been Boise State football over the last 10 years. They have had a real good thing going, but right now they trail Boston College 7 to nothing. The Eagles scored on their first drive of the game. L.B. Whitworth, another carry for the sophomore. Lowers his head, picks up two yards. Well, there, Buck, Boise State getting stout in the run game, run defense, and they're going to have to do that because that big offensive line of Boston College is going to want to assert themselves as this game progresses. That's when they usually wear opponents down as late in the third quarter, fourth quarter, when they can just really lean on you with those big bodies up front. Three receivers in the game for Boston College on second down and eight. Another delayed handoff. Whitworth. Cup sledding inside. There's some big boys in the middle of that defense at Boise State, and they snuffed that one out. Andrew Browning, Alex Guerrero combining to stop Whitworth for no gain. 
Yeah, Alex Guerrero outsized in the middle, just 6'1", 293 pounds, and everyone well over 300 pounds up front for BC, but they're just fighting inside, and you see him there, just relentless, strong at the point of attack. He's built low to the ground, a lot of lower body strength, so he can get under those big guys that for BC. Boy, leverage, game of leverage in the trenches for, uh, for those big defense and offensive linemen. Third down and 10. The Eagles need to get out past the 45-yard line. Ryan, with time, throws a bullet. Caught. Complete. And another first down for the Eagles. Heck of a catch made by Larry Lester. He had a man raped on his back. Yeah, it looked like number 20, Marty Tadman in coverage. But you see the eyes of the young quarterback, Matt Ryan, right here. Stepping up in the pocket, so just a little bit. But throwing with conviction right there. Stepping into the throw. Committing to the throw. Right there, not really throwing it unsure. I'm, I know where I'm going with the football. Let me get it there in a hurry, and he can put some zip on it. That's what they say about Matt Ryan. He throws with conviction, makes decisions, and follows through. Whitworth, pickup of a couple, crosses midfield. Call it a gain of four. Right, he has been fabulous in his starts. He's 4-0 as a starter this year, 4-1. Going back to last year, he had one start against Syracuse, but off to a good start in this ball game. And I tell you, I've been impressed with him. Not a whole lot of ball games under his belt, but he makes good, sound decisions in the games that we've watched him play in this year. Took over as the starting quarterback on a full-time basis against NC State. Second to last regular season game for BC. Is the catch made on the sideline? Yes, it is. Oh, what a Pick up just a couple of yards by the fullback. That's Mark Palmer. Well, he's a good job with the feet on the sideline. Matt Ryan getting a little bit of pressure. And then right there, keeping the eyes down the field so you can make a play. Then it's the big tight end, Jared Hunter, who makes the catch. So third down and five. The Eagles trying to keep this drive alive. With time. Wants to run for it. And he's not going to get there. Falls loose. And BC recovers. And I think they're going to have it up for a first down. The big fella, Jeremy Trueblood, caught the loose ball and fell forward. Well, he got tremendous pressure from Mike T. Williams, the defensive end from Boise State. And boy, they make Matt Ryan pay the price trying to elevate and get to the first down marker. You'll see here Mike T. Williams coming inside and stepping around to Matt Ryan. And Trying to get to the first down marker, going to elevate. Boy, what a big, big shot. You talk about a guy playing one heck of a football game. It's Alex Guerrero. He is holding his own inside and there, making Matt Ryan spit the football up. But nonetheless, a first down for Boston College. How about that? Tom O'Brien's team. They catch a break. Ryan fumbles. It was bobbled by Josh Beekman. Jeremy Trueblood picks it up and gets the first down. L.B. Whitworth. Brought down by Corey Hall, but not before he picks up five yards. You see that right there is where Boston College wants to live. Second down, medium, second down and short. They can go play action pass. If they choose, they can stay with the run. Take a shot down the field. But a lot of options when you keep yourself in second down and medium and get those big offensive linemen leaning on you. Or it makes you tough defensively. Clock ticking down, nearing the end of the first quarter of play. And that's going to do it for the first 15 minutes of this 2005 MPC Computers Bowl. Matt Ryan and the BC Eagles on top of Dan Hawkins and the Boise State Broncos. 7-0 is our score. The game's only touchdown, a Ryan to Lester touchdown. Georgia, West Virginia, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, Monday on ABC. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I fall! Fullness from the value menu. No one's going anywhere until you tell me who's full. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> New to the Big Bell value menu, the half-pound cheesy bean and rice burrito. Loaded with three cheeses, fiesta salt, and a cheesy zesty kick. Designed to keep your stomach and your wallet full. Number three, if I'm a new cheesy bean and rice burrito, you are... Oh, get full on value. Think outside the bun. 1855. Fred Miller brews his best beer yet. It has everything except the name. Then it hits you. 
Fred Miller's beer. Good call, Fred. Pick up some 1855 lagers, our tribute to Fred's first beer. Before you go here, before you attempt this, and before you even think about going there, you need to go here. Cooper Discoverer Tires, built to take you just about anywhere. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Go to coopertire.com for more information and a dealer near you. King Kong is the jaw-dropping, heart-stopping epic we've been waiting for all year. You'll feel like a kid again, staring at the big screen. What you see will spin your head six ways from Sunday. King Kong, rated PG-13, now playing. That zero rockets through the internet with breathtaking speed, shattering dial-up speed records. Only $9.95, half the price of AOL with greater customer satisfaction. Net zero high speed, defending your right to fast internet connection for less. Energizer E-squared lithium battery lets you take up to 600 photos and digital cameras versus up to just 90 with leaving ordinary alkaline batteries. Energizer E-squared lithium keeps going and going. A little bit of snow up in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, but down here on the blue turf of Bronco Stadium, all is clear. We're here at Treasure Valley, as they like to call it. This area, Boise, Idaho. This is the ninth running of the MPC Computers Bowl. And so far, so good for the Boston College Eagles. They have a 7-0 lead through 15 minutes of play. Second down and four. And the give goes to Whitworth. Whitworth gets to the 35, but not much more. It'll bring up a third down and short. Been out of the field, and Heather Cox has more on the duds from Boston College. Indeed, Boston College coach Tom O'Brien looking for every way to motivate this ball club. Well, he's done it with the uniforms. Boston College Eagles wearing all red for the first time since 1995. The reason? To add a little extra spark, a little extra energy, especially to the senior class that's trying to make history here today. Yeah, senior class have an opportunity to win. Go 35 and 15 since arriving on campus here. So. A little extra motivation. And they give to Brian Cole. And the linebacker gets the first down. That is what they bring him in to do. And once again, no problem. First down and Cole. <laughs> that, that's nice. The big fella just checks himself in. And, and I tell you, they get him going north and south in a hurry. You see Brian Cole take one step. And there's the hole right there along the right side of, the, of that offensive line. Those shoulder pads over his feet. Good body lean getting into the line of scrimmage, and then tremendous push up front from the big guy. So Brian Cole now two for two in short yardage situations. Ryan wants to throw, wants a bunch, goes deep, pass incomplete, intended for his tight end, Chris Miller. Big fellow running down the right side as the passes sail over his head. You're going to try to get him on a corner route, and anytime you're running the football as well as Boston College is, you're going to have opportunities for play action pass hold the linebackers with the play fake and then you get the tight end running behind the linebackers into the secondary and there he had a step chris miller it just overshoots him a little bit three receivers in the game tony gonzalez goes in motion whitworth stopped after a short gain and a flag fly yeah, usually in the area of holding and I'll tell you what, Boise State bending a little bit on this drive, but they're not breaking. And Hawkins wants a hold. That's usually where that flag is thrown. And we'll get the official word. Holding defense, number 57. Ten yards from the end of the run. Will be a first down. Well, That's usually, not the holding that Dan Hawkins wanted. No, usually when you run stunts, in the middle of a formation, a guy will grab to allow for another guy to come around it. And right there, you see, working in the middle of the formation, number 57, Andrew Browning. Boy, that was tough because they really weren't stunning. Well, usually you have a guy and you're trying to bring a defensive end around and inside holding the guard to allow him to come free up the middle of the formation is where you get it. There, boy, that looks like he's fighting to fight for his own life. Well, the Eagles will take it. Ball moves inside the 20-yard line. 
Whitworth with the carry, but the play stops and the flag flies. And this one's going to go against Boston College. It's going to be movement on the line. It's going to set him back five yards. I'll start number 88. Offense, five yards, first down. Tight end, Chris Miller. Well, Boston College, they have done fantastic work in their bowl games. They've won five consecutive bowl games. That's the longest current streak in the country. Is there a rhyme or reason for that success? Well, you know, it's just a guy, a guy like Tom O'Brien, the head coach, preparing each and every season. And then once you win a couple of them or you go to a few bowl games, you know how to prepare. His team always prepared through the regular season, just as prepared when they show up to play in bowl games. Ryan flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run, complete to Lester, who goes out of bounds. An excellent job on the part of Larry Lester working back for his quarterback, Matt Ryan. When he gets in trouble, scramble drill, everything breaks down. Now it's just kind of freelance football, and you're finding an open area once the quarterback starts to scramble. If you're along the sideline, you want to work back towards him. If you're on one side of the formation, you got to cross across the, the entire field to try to come open in front of the quarterback. And then Larry Lester is finding a hole along the sideline. Wasn't much yardage, but still a good job of picking up what he could. Yeah, officially a gain of well, a non-game. They say he was out of bounds right at the right line at the of scrimmage. So give him a catch, but no good, game. Good for a completion, though. Get, get on the stat sheet. Quarterback's best friend. <laughs> Ryan goes deep to the tight end, and Miller has it batted away. Miller was open, had his hand on the football, and then has it knocked away. Colt Brooks defensively from his linebacker spot able to make the play. Well, I tell you, he waited till the final moment to get just get a power up and get a hand on the football because it was lobbed in there nice and pretty. You'll see Colt Brooks right there at the highest point going up, defending against the tight end Chris Miller. Just a vertical route down the field trying to play the safety with your eyes. And Colt Brooks, the linebacker, has to go one-on-one -on -one in coverage, and he wins there against the tight end. 13 plays, but just 42 yards on this drive for BC. And they try and run for it. Skip goes to Callender, and Callender gets inside the 15, but he'll be well short of the first down. Kind of an interesting call, Andre. Yeah, just trying to pop one, catch, uh, catch Boise State in a defense where they're trying to run with receivers. I'll tell you, he got a heck of a block from number 75, Josh Beekman, who was pulling around to help out. And then, boy, he just he got matched up on a, on a little defensive back and slammed him about five yards down the field. Almost came out of there for a first down. A gain of 11 sets up a fourth down and four. Ryan Oliger will come on and attempt a 20-yard field goal. And it is good. 30-yard field goal, no problem for Oliger. And that puts BC on top, 10 to nothing. Tom O'Brien has to be pleased. cholesterol. Many men with these medical conditions have one thing in common. Their love life just isn't what it used to be. 
If this sounds like you, call 1-800-985-1970 or go to mensfacts.com for your free Men's Facts kit. You'll get a booklet about how diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol may lead to a medical condition that could affect your love life. Plus, you'll get tips to help you talk to your doctor and learn about a medicine that can help. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol, your love life could be affected. So get the facts. Call 1-800-985-1970 or visit mensfacts.com. You'll be glad you did. Call 1-800-985-1970 or visit mensfacts.com today. A large percentage of this crowd are Boise State fans, and right now, they're a little bit stunned. Boston College, they have come to this blue turf, and they have put a 10 spot on the board. 10 nothing they lead after a long drive, 15 play drive, nets them a field goal from 30 yards out from Oligan. Kickoff goes out through the back of the end zone, and Boise State, they will start on the 20-yard line. It looks like Jared Zabranski is going to sit this series out. We'll tell you who the new quarterback is for Boise State when we come back. So you're a former pirate with no formal training. Now you've got an eye patch, a hook, and a parrot on your shoulder. Arrgh. And all you can say is arg. Arg. <laughs> okay, Macklew Brothers need some help with their shipping. It says they use FedEx.com, so it's really easy. I'm confident you can handle it. Arrgh. Terrific. Thanks to FedEx.com's online shipping center, shipping has never been easier. Arthritis pain. Arthritis pain? Try my leave. People with arthritis are sharing their good news. Oh, oh honey. Mm. You've got to try this Aleve. Good news about the strength and safety of Aleve. Oh. Try my Aleve, Mom. It's amazing. Only Aleve has the strength to stop arthritis pain all day with just two pills. That would take eight Tylenol. Oh. Aleve. That's good news you'll want to share. To share your good news about Aleve, go to AleveGoodNews.com. FC Mom, my mom always watches what we eat and encourages us to eat our Campbell's Chunky Soup. Like new Chunky Fajita Steak. Eat up those big chunks of steak. She's also very encouraging from the sideline. Wait, wait, go that way. When you feed him, don't stop. New Campbell's Chunky Fajita Soup fill you up right. College. Welcome back to Boise Boston College up by 10 and offensive coordinator Pete Chris Peterson told us backup quarterback Taylor Tharp would play in the second quarter well that time has come now the reason it's not punishment for Jared Zabransky but instead a reward for Taylor Tharp more after this play brings it out to Ian Johnson and Johnson up close to the 50 yard line how about that for an explosive play in the first pass from Taylor Tharp a pickup of 25 yards Heather? And Eric Taylor Sartre played the entire second half in the season opener at Georgia after Zabransky had those six turnovers in the first half. He also played the majority of the second half in a win over Idaho, but for the first time, Taylor Tharp is preparing for a college game knowing he will play, and Coach Peterson did tell us that Tharp will have the same players at his disposal as Zabransky, a golden opportunity for the young quarterback. Yeah, and he'll go into the spring and compete with Zabransky for the starting job, so first time in a while that Zabransky will have to compete to remain the starter. Johnson this time on the ground. No, that's Jeff Carpenter with the carry. Brought down by Ray Henderson after a pickup of one. There's Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator. What are your thoughts, Andre, on rewarding players in a bowl game? <laughs> well, you know, there's a, there's a point and a place for it. And certainly when you're down like this, you're trying to find some rhythm. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if he gets hot. 
in this football game that he remains in there because you're down 10 nothing. you're just looking for some type of spark. I'm just a one quarterback kind of guy. I like to see one quarterback from start to finish unless there's just a huge, uh, just a very, very bad day at that position. Jeff Carpenter showing some patience. Little jitterbug moves out across the 50-yard line. He picks up five yards. It'll bring up a third down and about three, maybe four yards. Yeah, basically just trying to get things in a manageable down and distance on third down and medium. And keep the young quarterback in a position where he's not trying to do too much. Taylor Tharp has had some success, and that's why he's on the football field, and he's being rewarded. Yeah, they made no bones about it. They yeah. said he's practiced well the entire season. He's been a good soldier, good citizen, and they just figure end of the season, why not? Let's reward him for his due diligence. So he's on the field, and we'll probably see a, maybe a couple of possessions for Boise State. As it looks like this one's going to come to an end. That pass attempt to squeeze into the hands of Legadu Nene, and it's incomplete so the punting team will have to come on yeah leg and a was wide open just a little curl rod in front of the quarterback and this one you just step into and give him a catchable football throws it a little bit high but oh boy if he connects there it's first down and the chains will continue to move but the result boston college is going to get the football back and the dangerous will blackman more than likely will touch this punt off the foot of kyle stringer blackman one of the best punt returners in the history of college football He's not going to have an opportunity as that punt bounces at about the one-yard line and bounds in the end zone. So, Taylor Tharp and Boise State look like they had a good thing going, but they have to punt the football away. I'm going to buy some seeds from a company I've never heard of. And who are these guys? These, I know. I thought we were having a meeting. NPC Computers is one of the top PC companies in the country. We're getting all the technology we want, and no one touches NPC's service and support. They all say that at first. It's just a moment. Who is it? It's technical support at NPC Computers. They're on the line. That fast. Who are these guys? No, I gotta tell you, since I've been hurt and missing work, you've been a big help to this family. Ah. No, really. The cash we get from Athlex helps us maintain the house, put food on the table, and my Jenny continues with her piano lessons. Yep, this family's doing just fine. And it's all thanks to... Athlex, ask about it at work. Oh, I really like these. Oh, but they're 85 frosties. With all the delicious 99-cent choices on Wendy's Super Value menu, you'll see dollars in a whole new way. Oh, uh, how much do you make? Like six Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers an hour. For 99 cents, get Wendy's famous Junior Bacon Cheeseburger made fresh, hot off the grill, crispy chicken nuggets, or our new Junior Barbecue Cheeseburger, all on Wendy's Super Value menu. Honey, you look like a million crispy chicken nuggets. Do Wendy's, and for 99 cents, do what tastes right. We make 18 award-winning styles of Samuel Adams. Which is your favorite? I like the lager the best. Yeah, that's still my favorite, too. The cream stout? I like the dog man. Can light is my drink. Boston Ale. I think that it's the best ale that's out in the market. Black lager. This is really smooth. I like the stamp seasonal. Regardless of the season. Please wait. I didn't know there were 18. I probably tried seven or eight, so I got some work yeah. to do. of the 2005 MTC Computers Bowl. And in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Well, here in Boise, Idaho, there's a natural beauty that is everywhere. We play the ninth edition of the MTC Computers Bowl. Boise State has played in this bowl for four times over the years, over the nine years, and right now they are up against it, trailing 10 to nothing against the Eagles of Boston College. Larry Lester picks up six yards on that throw from Matt Ryan. You, know, you see a guy with a, a few more games under his belt, Matt Ryan, and then you talk about the backup quarterback, Taylor Tharp, basically the same type of pattern that uh, Matt Ryan just completed 
to Larry Lester. Just enough on the football, step into it, make a play, move the chains. Taylor Sharp unable to come up with that same completion earlier for Boise State. Ryan, another quick pitch and catch to Lester. And Lester has enough for a first down as he lunges to the 35-yard line and a pickup of nine. What a good job of finding the soft spot in the zone. Same play, opposite side of the field. Same formation as the play, the completion before. But just going to find the soft spot, turn around, give your numbers to the quarterback, and right on time before the hole collapses, Matt Ryan with a football. Lester now with four catches and 27 yards. Play fake. And they want a bunch looking for Blackman. The throw is incomplete. Blackman was being closely guarded by Orlando Skandrick. The freshman wins that time. Skandrick against the senior Blackman holding his own. Yeah, that's when they like to bring him off that short edge of the field. But they're in coverage showing his ability to defend down the field. And in Boston College wanting to take a shot to their playmaker, Will Blackman down the sideline and just overthrown. Ryan showing off that good arm. That ball was 55 yards in the air. Second down at 10. Andre Callender with the carry. And Callender barreling forward. Pick up a five yards. Marty Padman in on that stop. It'll bring up a third down. Yeah, run, running behind Andrew Woodruff, Ryan Claddy. And the big center, Jeff Cavender. Excuse me, uh, for uh, Boston College. The big offensive line trying to get some push up front. Not a whole lot of movement there. I'll tell you, Alex Guerrero has played an outstanding game defensively for Boise State. Just in there, in the middle, fighting, holding his own. Little guy just playing big today against a huge offensive line. Boise State looking for a stop. Trying to set up an inside screen, and it's snuffed out. Tony Gonzalez had it, but he goes down after a pickup of just two. Nick Fleckaway. When Nick Fleckaway had to redirect because they're trying to set up an outside screen to come from outside underneath and then up the field. And as a defensive lineman, as soon as you see the ball come out, you have to redirect and go out and make a play. Well, I tell you, he did a heck of a job there redirecting. And then you got to bring down a skill position player in the open field. And now a very dangerous Quinton Jones awaits the Johnny Ayers punt. You just saw the Jones second in the country in punt return average to only Maurice Drew of UCLA. He may have a chance. Feels it on the run at the 21-yard line. Makes two men miss. Spins and drops down close to the 40-yard line. But a return of 18 yards for Quinton Jones after a 37-yard punt off the foot of Ayers. So good field position for the Broncos of Boise State. Well, let's take a look now at today's AFLAC trivia question. Boston College has the longest active streak of bowl wins. That's five. What team has the longest active streak of bowl appearances? Good question. Well, only come up with good questions. I've, the I've, I've trivia got, question. uh, got one in mind. We'll hold it for later. Boston College now on defense. Antoine Carter is the deep back behind Taylor Tharp, now in his second series as quarterback for Boise State. And Tharp wants to throw for a bunch. Jump ball, middle of the field. That ball almost is intercepted. A flag flies, and who's this one going to be against? I'm not sure. The fans here think it's against Boston College. I'm not sure. A lot of redirecting guys trying to make a play for the football. And it may be on free safety Kevin Atkins. Pass interference, offense, number four, oh, wow. 15 yards, first down. Lagadu Nane is guilty of the infraction. Like we said, it was his jump ball. Everyone has the right to the football. He does, and he, he may have come through the defender in order to get back. Right there, just trying to hold him. Got a piece of the jersey. It was Larry Anam, who yeah. looked like he had good position on the football, trying to make a play, and Nene basically grabbed him with the right arm. Got that right arm on the jersey, trying to bring him down. You turn defender when you know it's underthrown, and all of a sudden, the defensive back can make a play on the football for an interception. You turn defensive back as the wide receiver, and there, he just a little too much jersey. Nene, that was a lot of experience as wide receiver. He's a converted quarterback. 
I lost the battle for the starting quarterback job two seasons ago to Jared Jabransky and said, I want to play a new position. Tharp completes it over the middle. Gets it to his tight end and Derek Schumann out to about the 33-yard line. A very well-designed play. They got Nene lined up in the slot and he's basically just going to pull coverage. Pull coverage out here and allow for the drag man to come underneath for this completion by Taylor Tharp. Right here, you see the drag coming underneath now, cleared out by this receiver, Nene. Well-designed football play. Pickup of nine yards. Schumann goes to the sideline. Jeff Carpenter goes in motion. Five receivers in the game for Boise State. Tharp on the run. Complete. But just a short gain along that left sideline. Pass is caught by Gerard Rabb, but it's going to bring up a third down and long. Yeah, or, uh, everybody's All-American and one of my favorite players in the country, Matthias Kiwanuka, been kind of kept quiet. He's working against Darren College, who hadn't given up a sack since his sophomore year here at Boise State. And I'll tell you, that's one heck of a matchup we'll keep an eye on. But, boy, he just, he's been quiet in this football game so far. Third down at 12. And a flag flies. Well, it looked like Boston College may have confused Boise State a little bit. Looked like they were going to bring pressure off the corner. Offense, number 73, five yards, third down. And that's the big fella, Darren College, right there. A little false start. Trying to get a head start on the defense, but look like Jasmine Williams is going to come from over the slot on a blitz. And uh, the safety's rotating over the top. Ryan Glasper as well to cover up in the slot. And you'll see it here. Watch for the safety blitz right there on your screen coming from number four on the outside. They decide to go zone here. No blitz. Tharp with time. And he tries to throw short incomplete. Looking for Cole Klassen. And it's going to bring up a fourth down. And the punch team will have to come on. But Boise State really struggling offensively. So far against Matthias Kiwanuka and the Eagles of Boston College. That drive was just killed by two penalties early. They set them back. Yeah, Ryan Claddy has done an excellent job on him as well because they're moving Kiwanuka around on that defensive line. They've had him at right end, left end, and well, both tackles for Boise State doing a pretty good job on him. Stringer's punt. He's short. It bounces. And it'll be down at about the 35-yard line, and that is where Boston College will start on offense. A punt of 33 yards. Matthias Kiwanuka and the defense for Boston College getting it done so far. So far, so good for Boise State. You see double team helping with, uh, with the backs to tackle and guard here. Double teaming on Kiwanuka. Right here in the outside rush, they leave him one-on-one -on -one with their best offensive lineman, Darren College, who does a fabulous job. Then Ryan Claddy gets inside and forces Zabransky, but even that one was a completion down the field. And then here, Claddy again working on Kiwanuka, getting to the quarterback, but just a little bit too late. So a lot of different ways to kind of keep him in check in this football game. Really hadn't had that breakout performance yet. On the ground, on first down. Austin College tries the left side and a pickup of maybe two yards. Yeah, Corey Hall kind of disrupted things from the middle linebacker position. Got there first, fought off a couple of blocks inside. But boy, he, is, uh, he has got a tough, tough tour today. A big offensive line and they're releasing, trying to get to the second level of the defense, which is where Corey Hall makes his home. So you're going to have those big 6'6 six, six guys in your face all day. Got to cipher through them and Get to the running back. Give once again to Whitworth. And once again, not much doing. He was undercut by Corey Hall. Hall jumped in there and made a nice stop near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Yeah, good job by Mike G. Williams as well. Collapsing from the right defensive end position, kind of forcing things back inside to Corey Hall. Good job of team defense. And that's what you need when you play and you're out man. Uh, team has a lot of size on you. You got to show up in numbers. So far, Boise State holding up. It's down by 10, but defensively playing well. 
Third down and eight, under pressure. Pass is incomplete, almost intercepted by Marty Tadman. Tadman sniffed that one out. He knew it was coming, almost had himself a pick. Big time, and they go blitz there to try to disrupt things for Matt Ryan. You'll see the blitz coming here. Corey Hall up the middle of the formation. And good ball awareness on the part of Marty Tadman. Finding the back in the middle, excuse me, the receiver coming underneath in the middle of the formation. Free safety, Marty Tadman. You got to cover up once guys blitz in vacate areas. You have to be responsible for the vacated area. Well played football play there by Marty Tadman. That is the first three and out forced by the Boise State defense. Quinton Jones will have room to return this one. Fields on the 16. Gets out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. A pickup of 12 on the return. Matthias Tiwanuka and his defense grabbing the lunch pail. They'll go back to work when we come back. You know what? What? This next scene always makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> incredible entertainment experiences in your lap? Get Intel Centrino mobile technology in your laptop. From a place called Boise, we invite you to escape to a place so unexpected, a world so incredible. It has the power to ignite your imagination. Come visit the city that will capture your heart, your mind, and your soul. Now at Menard, save 10% on everything in the store when you use your big card. Save money with Energy Star Good Earth Fluorescent Lighting. They use 75% less energy than standard fixtures. Give your home a decorative touch with miterless wood molding from House of Farrah. Choose from oak, pine, basswood, or prime. 10% off everything in the store when you put it on your Menard's big card. Hurry, sale ends December 31st. Save big money at Menard. Capital One Bowl Week rolling on here in Boise, Idaho. The MTC Computers Bowl. It's Boise State and Boston College going after it. As Boise State, they're losing 10 to nothing. We play the second quarter. Jared Zabransky back in the game under center for the Broncos. Possibly movement on that line. A flag is down. Antoine Carter carries it right side. He picks up about four yards. We'll have to see whether or not that will stand. Looks like Boston College may have flinched just a little bit. Zabransky goes with the hard count. You could see it in his body language that he's really trying to bark out the signal. Offside defense, number 94, five-yard penalty, first down. And he got the big fella to jump offside. So that's the free five for uh, for the the offense of Boise State. When I got free five, you get the you get the hard count, you get it to work for you. Next one was going over the top. You want to take a shot now because you got a free down, free five yards. Take a shot. Let's see if they do. Man in motion. Cole Classen. And they want to throw out on the perimeter. Nane with the catch and the first down. Let's go to Heather Cox, who is 
standing by in the stands. Heather? Joined by Dick Tharp, who is also the father of Taylor Tharp, and ironically, the former athletic director at Colorado. Now, first of all, let's talk about Taylor's two, two series. How would you assess his performance? Well, it's, as a parent, it's exciting and nerve-wracking to watch him play, but he's worked so hard. We're excited for him. Glad to see him get in there and have a go, and just hoping to get some points on the board. It's certainly tough in this win. Now, as the former athletic director at Colorado, you're very familiar with the football program and its recent struggles. With that knowledge, what sort of opportunities and challenges do you see for Coach Hawkins when he goes to Boulder? Well, as you, all right. as you know, Heather, we've been in Boulder 35 years. We've raised our kids there. It's a wonderful community and graduates from the University of Colorado. So we think it's an exciting place and a great university. You know, Hawk will do just fine. He'll come in with great enthusiasm and passion for kids in the game. And so he'll be great. On the other hand, we love Boise and we think it's a wonderful place. And you've been here a long time, I know. So we like coming up here and think this is a wonderful community too. So, you know, they all work out and it's just all about the kids and whatever is best for them will be fine. Having talked to Taylor quite a bit this week, what is his reaction and the players' reaction to Coach Hawkins' departure? Well, I think they have mixed reactions. As you, as you would expect kids to have, they have mixed reactions about losing somebody. They're glad that Coach Peterson is staying because they really like Coach Speech. And so they, the kids sort of go through all sorts of emotions and they settle down and just get on with their business. So they'll be fine. They're doing just great. Dick, we certainly appreciate your time. Happy New Year to you and your family. Take care Thanks, Dick. Okay, you too. Well, Heather, thank you so much. Well, the offense starting to come alive for Boise State. A big pitch and catch to Bransky to Vinny Ferretta for 18 yards. And then a little pitch out to Cole Klassen, who tries the left side and picks up another first down for the Broncos. So 37 yards picked up on the last three plays for Boise State. Yeah, best uh, offensive production so far for uh, for Boise State. False start, 73 offense, five yards, first down. Well, he's got the big fella lined up over him. He's trying to get out and maybe a pass set or get you know get a, an advantage on the run block on uh, Matthias Kiwanuka. And those two guys, that's, an, that's one heck of a matchup. College making his 52nd start in this football game. A lot of experience at that left tackle position going against an All-American and Matthias Kiwanuka. So they march back five yards. First down at 15. Fake to Jeff Carpenter. Set up the screen. Carpenter has it. And this time, picks up about four yards. The ball comes loose. And coming the other way is Ray Henderson. And Henderson inside the 15-yard line. A flag flies late that may be illegal participation from Boston College as a lot of their team is on the field right now. But a forced fumble, Jolon Dunbar knocks it loose and Henderson picks it up and runs it back inside the 15. Well, it was a good heads-up play on the part of Ray Henderson because the whistle did not blow and the official threw the beanbag, which, uh, which uh, basically is a signal for a fumble. They may have some tripping on the end of this as... Uh, Jeff Carpenter was trying sideline to run down warning. Ray Henderson. Boston College, sideline warning. Yeah. And he hit the nail on the head with that one, but a good heads-up play on the part of Ray Henderson. You see here, Jeff Carpenter inside, the ball comes out. It's clearly a fumble. And then Ray Henderson right there picking it up and going the other way with it. Did not hear a whistle, and it looks like he might be down, but he's not quite down yet. The ball comes out right there in the center of the screen, and Ray Henderson right in his mitt takes off down the sideline. Ray Henderson, Johnny on the spot. Former quarterback. 57 yards inside the 15-yard line down to the 14, but that play is now under review. Yeah, and uh, he's a former quarterback, so he knows how to run a little bit with the football. High school quarterback that came in after one semester, moved to linebacker in the middle. And right here, you're going to see if the knee is down. I don't think so. That is a fumble. The ball comes out. I think it's going to be Boston College's football at around the 13-yard line. I'm not sure we should be looking at the knee. Maybe the shoulder came down. Looked like the right shoulder was spinning down. That was the first part of the body for Jeff Carpenter to touch the field. Well, we'll take one more look at it, and you'll see right in here, kind of going down the helmet on the football, and now it's out right there. You see the football right there. It is out, clearly out. There it comes. It's a fumble. It is a fumble. That play's going to hold up. Yep. So Boston College, they catch a huge break as Boise State rumbling down the field, but they turn it over. That's a good job by our camera guys right there. 
That's uh, that's putting the camera right on the football, and I don't know what take what's taking so long. And that is a fumble in our book. Sam McCrew doing an excellent job. Remember the whack normally does not utilize that instant replay. Something but new. Every bowl game will be yeah. had the instant replay possibility. And going to it in 06 will be the whack. After review, the play is ruled a fumble. Play stands. Yep. Good job by the officials. They saw it exact way we saw it. And that's why the review is there. Just to get the calls right. So. Boston College, they have had the momentum the majority of this game, and it looked like maybe it was starting to slip away, but it doesn't. Yeah. They get the football back, and momentum once again on their side with this fantastic field position. A couple of penalties, and now turnovers. Two big ones in this football game for Boise State has put Boston College at point-blank range. Ryan wants to throw, wants a touchdown, back in the end zone, touchdown! Tony Gonzalez, his second score of the game. How about that for a lightning strike? 13 yeah. yards, Ryan Gonzalez. And he worked, he wastes it out because he's going to have a tight end. You'll see a tight end coming to your, you'll see the receiver ISO here first. Good job of pushing down inside and then flattening that thing off, coming right down the center of the formation. But a better job with the eyes of Matt Ryan kind of staring down the tight end, allowing for the receiver to come open behind him. And it was a two-level throw. If you either go right now to the tight end, or go to the receiver behind it, decided to wait it out for the touchdown pass. Matt Ryan in Boston College making it happen. 13-yard touchdown pass. Ryan to Gonzalez and the Boston College Eagles, they're soaring right now. They're on top, 17 to nothing over the Broncos of Boise State. Boston College is the newest member of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Not only do we bring our nationally ranked teams to the ACC, we bring a high standard of academic excellence, renowned faculty research and teaching, and award-winning student achievement. We bring more than 140 years of our Jesuit Catholic tradition of liberal arts education and service to others, and one of America's most vibrant cities with its limitless opportunity. We're Boston College, a great tradition and even greater future. From a place called Boise, we invite you to escape to a place so unexpected, a world so incredible, it has the power to ignite your imagination. Come visit the city that will capture your heart, your mind, and your soul. Here in spectacular Boise, Idaho. Nothing. Boston College stunning Boise State here at Bronco Stadium. 227 remaining here in the first half. And Santa Claus still giving out presents to the Eagles. A couple of turnovers, Boise State with an interception and a fumble in Boston College. They have made it pay off. Two touchdowns and a field goal while their defense has pitched a shutout against the Broncos. Yeah, defensively, they just make you earn it. We were talking to Dan Hawkins. He said, you know, where this time of year you get a lot of different goal line looks from different defenses. Against Boston College, you saw maybe five. You, they just don't allow you down inside the 10-yard line. Deep kickoff into the stand. So Boston College will start on defense, and Zabranski will have the ball in the 20-yard line. Now let's go back to the studio and Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Eric Lugo, Mark May alongside. Coming up at halftime, Matthias Kiwanuka will let you get to know him off the football field and project how he'll do in the NFL. We'll also talk about the next game of our doubleheader, the MasterCard Alamo Bowl, and what the Jaguars expect to get their quarterback back. And I would say not only where Matthias Kiwanuka will be drafted in which round, but how well he will do at the next level as a rookie. And I'd like to share with you why I think he'll even be better in the pro level than in the college game. Not all Kiwanuka all the time, but a lot of Kiwanuka <laughs> during halftime when we come back, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We will be watching. 
Zabransky wants to throw on first down, and it is low, looking for Gerard Rad, incomplete. I would say go back and take a look at the touchdown. You're going to see this is a two-level throw, a high-low. Tight end's going to release up the field, which allows the receiver to work behind him. And watch the eyes of Matt Ryan. Right here, the play fake, holding the linebackers up. Pause it right there. You see the commitment right here by the free safety allows for the receiver to work in behind him to get to the end of the end zone and right on time with the football, Matt Ryan. Well-designed football play, well executed by the quarterback. Zabransky under pressure. He is brought down. Nick Larkin, the first man to get to him, and he brings him down. And everything going the way of the Eagles right now. Larkin and B.J. Raji combining for the sack. You know, I found it funny. We were talking to Kiwanuka yesterday, and he said he went to Nick Larkin, who is a sophomore, just an underclassman, but basically asked him, how is it? You know, talk about teamwork at the highest level. He, he sought out a sophomore who looks up to him in terms of how to stop the run. How do you play the run? Give me some techniques. And he's always trying to polish his game as a run stopper. We know he can rush the passer, but he's become one heck of a run stopper as well. I think there is some reciprocal trading right there because <laughs> Kiwanuka, I think, gave him some tips That's on it. how to rush the quarterback. So, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll trade with you. You give me some, run, <laughs> some pass rushing ability, uh, some pass rushing technique, and I'll give you a little run stopping technique. Boston College calls the timeout. They want to keep some time on the clock should they get the football back. Well, time now for our Aflac Trivia Answer. We told you the Boston College has the longest streak of bowl wins at five in the country. But we asked, what team has the longest active streak of bowl appearances? And the answer is, how about that, the Wolverines I, coming out of the Big Ten. I whispered it to the big fella here, our stage manager, Bob Lanigan. You didn't whisper it to me. <laughs> well, you know, I can't. You know, if I whisper it to you, I reveal the answer to, uh, to the viewing audience. So I had to whisper it to Lanigan, and he can vouch for me. 31 consecutive seasons of playing in the postseason. Now, they're normally, over recent years, playing in January. Yeah. This is a little bit different. They're going to play the MasterCard Alamo Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN later tonight, taking on Nebraska. And that game obviously played in December, so somewhat of a change for Michigan. On third down and long, pass intended for Rab, and Zabransky can't find his mark. Incomplete. I thought it was a well-thrown football in there. Gerard Rab basically has to come up with that football. It was a well-thrown, well-executed play, a little in-route deep down and he gets to the first down marker but then finished the play with the reception i think he thought he was going to get hit and uh that little gator arms working then that would have been a 20 yard gain and enough for a first down but instead they have to punt the football away will blackman has it a little bit of juke gets to midfield and he's brought down in a huff no good starting field position after a 41 yard punt and a six yard return Matt Ryan has just 50 yards to go for another score for Boston College. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's go back real quick to the, the uh, job that they're doing, the right guard and right tackle, working on Kiwanuka, trying to get outside. And, boy, they're going to right there, no threat to the guard. He's going to go help out the big fella. And you can do that inside, in, in the trenches. Both guys working well against Kiwanuka. He draws double teams. Deep backs are trying to double team, tip to get out. That's when you know you're good. Drawing double team every time. Ryan throw on first down. Pass is complete. Once again, looking for his favorite target today, Tony Gonzalez. Gonzalez now with four catches. Two of them have gone for touchdown. Pickup of six on first down. Well, my good friend Clyde Drexler used to tell me all the time, you know you're good when you get the, when they when you draw the double team every night. The Kiwanuka <laughs> drawing double teams all throughout this football game. Timeout is called. Boise State calls that timeout. A little bit surprising. Not sure what they gain by calling a timeout. They don't have the, the right personnel on the field. Let's take a look at both touchdowns by Tony Gonzalez working across the formation. The first one here, a little in route. Matt Ryan gets pressure, but he doesn't stop his route. He continues to work in the scramble drill. And right there, accurately thrown football. And then here, the high-low, working the higher end of it. The tight end pulls in coverage. And working behind coverage is Tony Gonzalez. Well, I tell you, the thing that impressed me on both those touchdown receptions were the timing. And if he's late in the scramble drill, it's got an opportunity to be knocked down or picked off there. 
Just the timing. As soon as he clears the tight end, the football is already in the air. Matt Ryan gaining experience on the field. And you, I tell you, just been fabulous in terms of his timing, getting back, getting set, and getting the ball out to his playmaker. And lest we forget, that touchdown, the first one to Gonzalez, was on a fourth down and four play. Yeah. So a gutsy pass attempt from Matt Ryan completed to Gonzalez. They want to throw for it, and they want a bunch. Deep has a man, incomplete, but a flag flies. We're going to have interference inside the five-yard line on Blackman. Yeah. Gerald Alexander got too much of Blackman on his way by, and he's whistled for the infraction. Well, and if you think the wind in this stadium's not blowing, that football was just taken away by the wind. You put it up there, and if it's not cutting through the wind, even when it's at your back. Pass interference. Defense, number two, 15 yards, automatic first down. Yeah, you can hear it in the referee's microphone there, but it is blowing, and it got up uh, a, a good good piece into the air and it just took off once the football is in the air you watch it here matt ryan you see him trying to work at a, uh, a an in and out move to will blackman and the football is just being blown about 10 yards inside way inside towards the official and you know that he throws an accurate pass but it <laughs> wasn't matt ryan it was the wind that affected that pass alexander was hoping that maybe that pass was uncatchable maybe the penalty would be waved off but the yeah, it was almost said that it was, was still catchable. Yeah, it almost was. He was trying to maybe work back inside to get to the football, but it was clearly affected by the wind. You know, that'll come into play when you're trying to kick field goals, extra points, if it's blowing that hard. It'll be tough. And you, you know, people think, oh, well, we get the wind to our back. But that's sometimes as for a quarterback, that's tougher because, you know, you can you got to knife it through if it's in your face. He had to put some touch on throws like that one, and then it, all of a sudden it gets carried away. You got to adjust to it, put it outside the receiver, and let it blow it back, blow it back inside. Boise State, they've done a good job of shooting themselves in the foot in this quarter alone. 49 penalty yards. That's a recipe for disaster, Tough particularly play, playing a fundamentally strong team like Boston College. First and ten, Ryan throws to no one in particular. Well, he's outside the tackle box. Smart guy, the fans here want to see a uh, intentional grounding, but there's no one open, a, a receiver in the area, and he just lobs it out of bounds. And Ryan has given his team a jolt of energy ever since being inserted into the starting lineup. He is 4-0 as a starter for the Eagles. See the big fella Jeremy Trueblood here just working against number 96, Mike G. Williams, and won't let him up. I tell you, that's that's finishing the play right there. That's playing to the whistle. On a blitz, may have trumped him. Andre Callender can't hit the hole fast enough. He had room to run if he could just get past that first wave, but Josh Bean knifes in and makes a nice catch. Chris Barrios also able to trip up the runner on his way through. Yeah, Chris Barrios, actually, it was True Blood, Jeremy True Blood, who missed the block and allowed for Barrios to make the play, pull him around inside, and they like to use him in a lot of different ways. He's a good football player, big, big kid that has good movement. Well, Thursday, ESPN offers up two more bowl games. At 4.30 Eastern, it's the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets taking on Utah and their high-scoring offense. That will be in the Emerald Bowl. Then at 8 Eastern, it's an Oregon Duck team that was shunned by the BCS despite having just one loss on the season. They'll take on the suddenly hot Oklahoma Sooners in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. The Emerald Bowl and the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl are part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. I, I still, still think that uh, Oregon got the bad end of that deal. And you look at Utah here, their pass offense, 15th in the country, total offense, 12th. But uh, you go back to that, Notre Dame being thrown into that, uh, that bowl game, I think Oregon. Oregon got the short end of the stick. How is it? Explain to me that we have BCS rankings all season long. You're ranked ahead of a team, and they go to a bowl before you go. I right, it make me understand now. You got to put some fannies in the seat. Well, you know, Notre Dame brings the crowd. Not that far of a trip down to Arizona for Oregon fans. Third down and 11. And before the snap, the flag flies on the field. May have been movement on line for Boston College along that right side. 
off start. 77 offense, five yards, third down. That's the right tackle, Gosder Sherlin. Sophomore from Somerville, Massachusetts, and that doesn't please Tom O'Brien. And he is a huge offensive lineman. Checks in at 6'7", 320 pounds, and can move. And, you, know, you talk about guys along that line. They're just not, they're not just big guys. They're big guys that can move. A lot of them have a, a basketball backgrounds, so they have good feet when they come to uh, Boston College. Blitz is picked up. Ryan with time. Left side. Blackman! Touchdown, BC! Will Blackman won that jump ball. A 35-yard touchdown. Ryan's third touchdown pass of the half. And it's now 23 to nothing, Boston College. A flag is down on the field, but I think this play's going to hold up. Well, it looks like the defensive back, who was Austin Smith, may have slipped, which allowed Will Blackman to come back for this football. The ball hung in the air a long time. It may be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that, that'll be added on the kick to this as well. We get the word, the official word here. There's Orlando Skandrick being coached up by Dan Hawkins. Like conduct, defense number 16, yeah. removing the helmet on the field. 15-yard penalty will be administered on the kickoff. That's basically he's out of frustration because he knew his teammate Austin Smith had help over the top. He slipped. He really didn't see him, but you'll see him rip his helmet off and throw it right there. You can't do it. I'm surprised he's still in this football game. Yeah, he is a true freshman, and sometimes true freshmen make mistakes like that. Touchdown of 35 yards. Boston College with touchdowns on fourth and four and third and 16 already in this first half. Extra point, no problem. 24 to nothing. And how about this for a shocker? Boston College coming into a lion's den and really handing it to Boise State so far through 30 minutes. A tough look here, but when you, you'll see the, the defensive back, number 37, Austin Smith, slip down, which allowed for Will Blackman to make this play. Coming from inside out, you see the slip right there. And then all of a sudden, Will Blackman, their playmaker offensively, comes in for the touchdown reception. And Matt Ryan. Talk about that spark that he's given this team when there's opportunities. He's the type of guy, he likes to jump at those opportunities. He really does. I mean, he sees a guy open, and he will really get the football there. He is an accurate passer, a good leader, a competitor. And I'll tell you, his, his teammates, even Matthias Kiwanuka, when he talks about Matt Ryan, a lot of respect from the senior to the sophomore. Right now, Boston College is playing angry. And there may be a reason why they're playing angry. Tom O'Brien's team, they spent Christmas here in Boise, <laughs> Idaho. And what happened at their Christmas dinner? Here in the potato capital of the world, they ran out of mashed potatoes. So these guys are angry. Yeah. That's been sticking in their car for a couple of days now, and they're, they're taking it out on the Boise State Broncos. Yeah, he was talking about that yesterday. He says, you know, how do you run out of pota mashed potatoes at Christmas dinner? <laughs> A little upset about it, he joked about it, but you know you could see that there was some uh, some seriousness seriousness in his face as well. 24 nothing, the Eagles of Boston College making a statement, stunning Boise State and their fans. I mean, this is a place they are not used to losing ball games. On the 50, and that ball easily sails out of the back of the end zone. And oh, Boise man. State will start on the 20 yard line. Oh, man, there looks a little shot. All the fans here, they are not used to seeing their football team suffer at the hands of opponents here early in this football game a 24 0 lead. Now, just a couple of moments ago, it was a 10 0 Boston College lead, mm -hmm. but Boise State. They were driving. Turnover. Penalty. Returned by Ray Henderson. And next thing you know, it's 24 to nothing. I mean, they absolutely look stunned here. And this is not the football team they are witnessing or, or have witnessed for many, many years in this stadium. Take one like this. But you know what? It's an offense that can get you back in the football game in a hurry. So don't blink your eyes, boys of state. You may miss something. Boise State, eighth in the country in scoring offense. They average 37 points per game. 
They average 47 points in every home game they play. But right now, they have a goose egg next to their name. Yeah, and you see the big fella, Matthias Kiwanuka, working down the line of scrimmage from the back side, getting to Jeff Carpenter, the running back. And that flies under the radar. His ability to play against the run really, really flies under the radar. Nebranski going on the run. Game's complete, looking for Ligadu Nene. It'll bring up a third down and long. <laughs> Scoring normally not a problem for Chris Peterson's bunch. Take a look at those numbers. They were tops in the country in 2002 and 2003. Last year, they slipped all the way down to second, putting up 48 points tonight. This year, down to eighth, but still very respectable. 37 points per game. But right now, at the 29 minutes and change, zero against the Eagles of Boston College. Yeah, it's been tough, and when you get yourself a 24-point lead, a lot of things you can do defensively in terms of trying to create the pressure. Nice catch. Gerard Rath has it and goes out of bounds. About the 46-yard line, a pickup of 22 yards. So the Broncos still fighting here in the first half. Yeah, two timeouts left, 36 seconds, a lot of time left in this first half all you want to do is go down and get some type of points on the board if you can if whether it's a field goal you want the momentum going into the locker room so you can have something to hang your hat on here in the second half lifts on zabranski gets it out Nene had it then lost it nice throw but Nene can't hang on. He was stumped by Dewan Tribble. Yeah, they blitz Jasmine Williams. And he gets there just a little bit late. You're going to see him coming into your screen. And then all of a sudden, right here, that's one you got to have. You're struggling all day long. But a well played, well played by Dewan Tribble. Get your hands on the football. A couple of receivers now have had, had a chance. Rab early in the football game and then there. Legadu Nene, you got to bring those footballs in. Second down and 10. And Zabransky wants a bunch. Throws in traffic. Incomplete. Dewan Tribble, nice defense. Vinny Peretta had it knocked out of his hands. Yeah, he's their best cover guy, Dewan Tribble. And they, he's the guy that allowed them to move Will Blackman to the offensive side of the football. He really stepped his game up. And Zabransky holding the safety, trying to take a shot. Down the right side of the formation, outside, and right there. Getting a hand on the football is Vinny Ferretta, but better played on the part of DeWan Tribble. Jared Zabranski just won for his last six. Trying to kickstart this offense. Near the end of the first half. Third down and a bunch. Slips out of the pocket, tries to run for it, goes out of bounds at the 50-yard line. You see, I think that's when Zabranski gets himself in trouble. That Georgia game they got behind early in the football game, and he started trying to make plays, trying to force things in there into tight areas, and he, you wind up turning the football over a bunch. And this is a, a recipe for a mess for Zabranski if he tries to adopt that theory here. He is a courageous quarterback, but he's got to remember, it's one down at a time to work himself back into this football game. Fourth down at five, 17 seconds remaining. It looks like they're going to go for it. Is this surprising to you? Not at all. Uh, Dan Hawkins comes to win. He, he's not going to leave anything uh, left. There won't be anything left on the table. Carpenter has the football, and Carpenter trying to die for the first down. He's not going to get there. So Boston College is going to take over on down with 11 seconds remaining. And, and a timeout. And uh, I'd have to say I would take a shot here. You, you, you never have enough points. You don't know when. You lose momentum. They go right to the line of scrimmage. And they're actually going to huddle up. But uh, Tom O'Brien may kneel it down here. But I'm telling you, I would, I would try to strike again. There's, not, there's, not a such, there's no such thing as too many points in the first half of the football game. Matt Ryan. He's that passing game. We can, get, we, can get friendly. we can get friendly in the second half. <laughs> Trying to set up a big play. Ryan with plenty of time. Throws deep, going off that big arm. And the pass is caught by Blackman. Blackman needs to get in, and he's brought down at the two-yard line. He is just denied. 
But he comes back, works back for the football, and the time's going to run out here on Boston College. But boy, a gutsy call, well thrown football, and, and a better catch on the part of Will Blackman. The wind looked like it affected this pass again. Right here, Matt Ryan gives it all he has, and the wind, you see it floating a little bit inside. But Will Blackman right there, going up right where you're supposed to catch it at the highest point, and he almost about a yard and a half short of pay dirt. He needed 54 yards. He got 53. Matt Ryan to Will Blackman, just a hair short. That would have been disastrous for Boise State. But Boston College, with momentum firmly on their side, they go into the locker room on top of Boise State, 24 to nothing. Let's go down to Heather Cox, who is standing by with the head coach for Boston College. Coach O'Brien, Boise State averages 47 points per game here on the Blue Turf. Defensively, what have you done to hold them scoreless? Well, I think that our kids are playing well. I think, you know, obviously, Frank Spaziani did a good job putting the game plan together, but, you know, it's only halftime. They're a great second-half football team. They outscore people about 5-1 to one the second half, so we're going to play really well to win this one. Your backup quarterback, Matt Ryan, already three touchdown passes. How have you put him in a position for success? Well, he's not our backup. He's our starter now and has been, but, uh, you know, he loves to compete. He's got a great arm and uh, made a couple great throws. Just too bad we couldn't get in there at the end. Nice first half, Coach. Eric, back to you. Thank you so much, Heather. There goes Tom O'Brien, his team on top, 24 to nothing. Now let's go back to the studio for the college football halftime report and Reese Davis. Reese, take it away, my friend. Got a little nugget for all of the teams in the ACC. When Boston College comes to your town, do not run out of potatoes in the pregame. They'll, they'll lay a whipping on you if they don't have if they don't have a proper measure of carbohydrates coming into the game a few days before. Hey, 24 nothing. BC has been dominant. Some said they're a little bit miffed about being in this game. Felt as if they'd earned their way to a higher level bowl game. But Lou, the other side of this is Dan Hawkins. You and Mark both believe that Dan Hawkins should have moved on to Colorado and let Chris Peterson coach this game. The way these two teams have matched up, I'm not sure this is all about lame duck coaching in the first half. No, it really isn't. I think if you look at the Boise State, they played three real good football teams this year. They played Georgia, Oregon State, as well as Fresno State. Their average margin loss in those three games was almost 20 points. So you expected it. But on the other hand, I think it's totally unfair to Boise State, to Coach Peterson, that they didn't have the opportunity to coach this game, to prepare the football team, and to start his future with this game. I congratulate Boston College on the way they played, but it's just a lame duck coach, never does very well, and I've been there. I'm just going to break it down to nuts and bolts. If you look <laughs> at the Boston College offensive line, each player averages over 45 pounds more from the offensive line to Boise State's defensive line. <laughs> at the point of attack, they're more dominant, they're more physical. Quarterback Matt Ryan has all day to throw this football. He's looking at his first look, his second look, his third look, throwing the ball out of bounds if no one's there. He's passed for just under 180 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. Chris Peterson's wondering what he ever did to you. Why do you, why do you want him to start his career 0-1 after dealing with Boston College right out of the game? Let Hawk Love take this last loss. I'll start next year. Dan Hawkins, if you're smart, you'll sip over some mashed potatoes at half. <laughs> yeah, like a peace offering, maybe. 24 nothing. Boston College has the lead. It's been 10 days since Wayne Gretzky left the Phoenix Coyotes to be with his family. His mother passed away on December 19th after losing a battle of cancer. Gretzky is back. He will be behind the bench when the Coyotes play the Sharks tonight. Also making a return is Byron Leftwich, suffered a broken ankle earlier this season. Back at practice with the Jaguars, he is listed as questionable for Sunday's game against Tennessee. Comes a question of whether do you want to get Leftwich a little bit of work or do you want to protect him from the possibility of further injury. We continue here at halftime. A guy who has largely been slowed down by Boise State, Matthias Kiwanuka, traveled a long road and what his impact has been and what his has, and how it has impacted him. A different kind of New Year's Eve countdown, 11 p.m. on ESPN2. There's something you should know about cold. Claret and D is so effective that even relieves nasal congestion due to cold. Non-drowsy, long-lasting, Claret and D. Now your cold congestion can be Claret and clear. We had a merry time pillaging. But with so many people switching to Capital One, we've had to find new jobs. All we want for Christmas is our dignity. Oh, 
low rates and great rewards, switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? I'm making a list. Boise State is a high-powered offense, and they haven't had to deal with Matthias Kiwanuka in that BC defense before. 24 to nothing, Boston College has the lead at the half. When Matthias Kiwanuka was a third grader, his mom gave him $100 and sent him to a candy store. It said it was like being in heaven. When Matthias Kiwanuka's mother then got the candy, confiscated it, and then she started giving it to other children when the family landed in her native Uganda. That was when young Matthias started to understand his heritage. His grandfather, Benedicto Kiwanuka, was the first prime minister of Uganda and was later tortured and executed during political upheaval. Tom Rinaldi tells us how his grandfather's life has left a permanent mark on Kiwanuka. Across his back, in 25 square inches of ink, Matthias Kiwanuka wears the presidential seal of Uganda. On the wall in his dorm room, he hangs the Ugandan flag. While much of his present life centers on football, his personal history has been shaped by a man he never met, a man who was murdered decades ago, half a world away, his late grandfather, Benedicto Kiwanuka. He was a man who was willing to give his life for the people. He was in a position where he didn't necessarily have to, to do what he did, but he chose to. Uganda lies in a cradle of mountains astride the equator in eastern Africa. Benedicto Kiwanuka was elected its first prime minister in 1962, after the nation won its independence from Great Britain. A lawyer, judge, and champion of human rights, he raised the country's minimum wage and worked for educational equality. He just wanted um, to do anything possible that he could, so um, just, just working for the people, not oppressing anybody, like lifting everybody up and, and giving everybody the same chance, the same opportunity. The opportunity was short-lived. In the beginning of 1972, the dictator Idi Amin took over the government in a military coup sinking the nation into violence and chaos. Benedicto Kiwanuka was murdered that September. You know, they shut down the schools. We, we went to school, but we didn't have classes because everybody was in tears. Born in America, Matthias and his brother and sister didn't understand their grandfather's legacy until taking a trip to Uganda in grade school. Their view of the family would never be the same. Why was everybody expecting us to be great? And they were telling them, your grandpa, we know your grandpa was a great guy, and you guys are going to be good. He had that much of an effect on people's lives that, you know, decades later, they felt, you know, inclined to come up to his grandchild and just say thank you for something that, you know, that he had done for them. A future first-round NFL draft choice Kiwanuka's goals are greater. He's a leader on the field, yet he feels a purpose far beyond it, in a faraway land, instilled by a grandfather whose life and work ended too early. I obviously feel like there's a lot to live up to. Um, I don't feel um, that I bear the brunt of the challenge. I feel like there's a lot of people in my family and, and um, in, in Uganda who, who definitely share the, share the same thought, and it's just that you know, we want to want to continue to work to make things better. We didn't want, we don't want my grandfather's work to to die with his absence. That is precisely how Kiwanuka says he plans to use the money that he makes from becoming an NFL football player, which 
possibly maybe he may become an NFL star. He will, and the reason why is because he has everything that you're looking for in a defensive end. He's six foot seven, 260 pounds, long arms. He will get bigger once he gets to the NFL and gain weight. But here's the key: he's still a raw talent. Tom O'Brien's done a magnificent job with him. But when he gets to the next level, when he can practice five or six days a week with an NFL coach that's going to teach him great technique, he's only going to get better, and he will be a superstar in the NFL. He will start as a rookie wherever he's drafted. Oh, I think he's going to be outstanding. Why I think he has a chance to even be better in the pros. In addition to the things that Mark said, is the fact that he's going to have other good players rushing the passer. If you watch him today, he'll get free, he'll come loose, he'll core, cause the quarterback to be flushed out. But when he's playing in the NFL, he's going to have three other outstanding pass rushers with him, which will only make him be more productive. Now, Mark, you talked about him being a raw talent. He was a basketball player for a long time in high school and sort of evolved to football as he grew. Boston College almost found him by accident while recruiting other players. Mel Kuyper, meanwhile, on what Matthias Kiwanuka's stock is in the NFL draft. Matthias Kiwanuka, defensive end, Boston College. Not an NFL team that's not looking for a pass rushing defensive end. Kiwanuka has the size and the wingspan to be disruptive getting after that quarterback. Consistency week to week, lacking a little this year. But I think Kiwanuka is the kind of guy early in round one, whether it's the Oakland Raiders, the Detroit Lions, pass rusher off the edge. Kiwanuka, once he puts it all together, could be an excellent NFL player. Kiwanuka's been an excellent player in the first half. Pretty much everybody wearing a Boston College uniform has been pretty good. 24-0 over Boise State. We'll look ahead to Michigan and Nebraska in a bit. Eight million American men have diabetes. 29 million have high blood pressure. 50 million have high cholesterol. Many men with these medical conditions have one thing in common. Their love life just isn't what it used to be. If this sounds like you, call 1-800-985-1970 or go to mensfacts.com for your free Men's Facts kit. You'll get a booklet about how diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol may lead to a medical condition that could affect your love life. Plus, you'll get tips to help you talk to your doctor and learn about a medicine that can help. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol, your love life could be affected. So get the facts. Call 1-800-985-1970 or visit mensfacts.com. You'll be glad you did. Call 1-800-985-1970 or visit mensfacts.com today. This trial, it's even real. This is a set. There, there's no ceiling up there. He's not a real judge. He's an actor. This girl has cue cards. Ladies and gentlemen, this trial isn't even real. No. This isn't a real courtroom, but there is a real courtroom inside each one of us. A tiny little courtroom where we all must decide for ourselves. On tape. All rise, the great tape. Paterno's Nittany Lions were on few radar screens at the beginning of the season. The two exciting early season Big Ten wins against Northwestern and Ohio State had Penn State undefeated heading into Ann Arbor. The Wolverines and Nittany Lions were locked in a seesaw battle for most of the day until Michael Robinson appeared to seal the deal late in the fourth. Robinson, quarterback, draw, Robinson, touchdown! It wasn't over. Penn State hit the Steve Preston. That was a mistake. Down the sideline, broke a tackle. Steve Preston, he's got two to beat. Preston across the 40. All the way out to the 46 yard line. Michigan was driving when Lloyd Carr met with the officials to get more time put on the clock. We set the game clock to 30 seconds based on the time. The timeout was requested by the coach. The extra seconds proved to be the difference for Michigan with one kick left on the clock. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan! Michigan wins! That game might have knocked Penn State out of the national championship case, but Joe Pa won out headed to their first BCS game ever. And it will be Penn State and Florida State in the FedEx Orange Bowl, but that was a signature moment this season for Michigan. The Wolverines had a little bit of an up-and-down campaign. Same could be said for Nebraska, and those two teams get together in the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. 
8 o'clock Eastern Time here on ESPN. It's funny how, Lou, one game can change the perception of a program. After Nebraska thumped Colorado 30-3, to all of a sudden things seem to light with the children of the corn. Uh, are they headed in the right direction at Nebraska? I personally don't think so, and I'll tell you why for several reasons. Number one, they changed their recruiting. They used to get an awful lot of athletes out of Texas. They've only gotten two total the last two years, and they have no commitments this year. They've also gone a junior college route with 21 different junior college players being signed. In addition to that, the walk-on program has been the basis of Nebraska. They're trying to phase that out. Why is the walk-on program important? Because that's what tied the little towns of the University of Nebraska produced the loyalty. And also, if you look at this, they lost to Kansas here for the first time since 1968. There are 10 wins and 10 losses against Division one teams the last two years. And let's keep this in mind. He inherited a football team that won 10 football games, lost three, beat Michigan State in the bowl game. That wasn't good enough for the previous coach. I don't believe 7-4 is good enough for the present. So, so does that end on their helmets now, Sam, for no reason for optimism? No, no I, reason I, for I, I, I just, all, I, all I did was try to give you facts and look at it. This isn't personal. Hey, no, I'm here to look. I just, I just meant your... <laughs> I don't like the way you're looking at me, Mark. For <laughs> <laughs> the other side of the coin, you look at Michigan. What direction is this program going? Preseason, top 10 ranked Michigan. They're supposed to have a heck of a team this year with Chad Henning and Michael Hart back as sophomores. But I think the key, you have to look at Lloyd Carr. Where is this program going? If they lose against Nebraska, this will be the first time in over two decades that this team has lost five games in a season. And don't forget, he's one in four against Ohio State as Jim Trestle as the coach. How long will Lloyd survive? This is a huge game for them against Nebraska. I think they win this game because athletically on both sides of the ball, they're much better than Nebraska. Nebraska shouldn't even be close in this game. All right, so Michigan and Nebraska, that's coming up a little bit later on tonight. Mike Tirico will have the call for us along with Kirk Herbstreit. Mike's in San Antonio. Reese, thanks, and welcome to the Alamo Dome, where the Wolverines and the Cornhuskers, two of the proudest programs in the history of the sport, will square off here in a little bit. When you look at the tail of the tape between these two schools, number one and number four all-time in wins, 85 conference titles, 80 bowl games combined, 16 national champ championships, both in the 90s uh, for each school, and each team's won three Heisman trophies. Good to be with you, Kirk Herbstreit here as well. I was excited to do the game. I heard the guys. I'm like, oh, oh he's got it down now. Oh. These two teams aren't good. We're kind of fired up for this matchup. <laughs> I was until about five yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. So, uh, the guys bring up all valid points of why there are questions. And maybe, Herbie, that's why this game, for two programs that are used to New Year's Day bowl games, does carry a little more importance than it otherwise might. I think tonight's a classic example of why kind of that second tier bowl game sometimes gets overlooked by your average college football fan but when you talk to these players and coaches there are a lot of reasons that this game is very important I'll start with Michigan and you just heard Mark touch on it they lost their last game they have a bad taste in their mouth they want to send their seniors out with a win they also have a lot of players coming back next year and that is very important to try to build some momentum towards next year now the Nebraska Cornhuskers you can look at Colorado and say they're a terrible team look what happened to them in their bowl game but I'll tell you what it was just that Nebraska played well for themselves. They executed on offense, and they're trying to use that game as momentum coming into this game and use this game as a building block in the next year. All right, live on the field as the Huskies get ready. All the issues the guys talked about, we will deal with. The players have had fun on the river walk, and we will see Michigan, Nebraska coming up after the second half. Reese, see you then, bud. All right, Mike, keep that enthusiasm up anyway. Just the way the BC fans are right now, Matt Ryan to the Tony Gonzalez in college football, his second touchdown of the game, 24-0 BC. Before you go here. Before you attempt this. Before you even think about going there, you need to go here. Cooper Discoverer Tires, built to take you just about anywhere. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Go to coopertire.com for more information and a dealer near you. Ooh, you okay? Uh, it's this arthritis pain. Arthritis pain? Try my leave. People with arthritis are sharing their good news. Oh. Oh, honey, mm -hmm. you've got to try this Aleve. Good news about the strength and safety of Aleve. Oh. Try my Aleve, Mom. It's amazing. Only Aleve has the strength to stop arthritis pain all day with just two pills. That would take eight Tylenol. Oh. Aleve, that's good news you'll want to share. And for powerful cold relief, find Aleve Cold and Sinus at the pharmacy if it's not on the shelf. From a place called Boise, we invite you to escape to a place so unexpected. A world so incredible.
incredible. It has the power to ignite your imagination. Come visit the city that will capture your heart, your mind, and your soul. Here in spectacular Boise, Idaho. They will meet for the national championship, Texas and USC, in the Rose Bowl, January 4th, 8 Eastern time, available on high def and ABC, and you can hear it on ESPN Radio. You know, the Trojans can do no wrong. Back in about 200 BC, Pete Carroll led these Trojans to invent fire. I did know that. If only Custer had had Pete Carroll and given him a month to scheme, little bighorn, never happened. This is the Bowl Challenge Cup Trophy presented by Cooper Tires. The winning conference of the Bowl Challenge Cup will take home that beautiful piece of hardware. And so Marvin. far, the Pac-10 is off to a 2-0 start. Let me tell you something, baby. The Bowl Challenge Cup has come a long way during our tenure as far as the value of the hardware itself. At one time, it was super glued and duct taped together, but look at it now. Look at it now. I, I, this is how this thing. Go ahead, Lou. I can tell you this from being in a conference. That's important to every conference. And, and right the bragging rights are there. You Absolutely. have to have three teams in both and the best winning percentage. And right now, the ACC looks to be on its way to getting a victory behind Boston College. Miami has a four-point lead over BC. Here's your ball game, folks, as Flutie takes the snap. He drops straight back. Now he scrambles away from one hit. Looks. Uncorks a deep one for the end zone. Phelan is down there. Oh, he got it! Did he get it? He got it! Touchdown! 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 Touchdown, Boston College! 100% whole grain, 110 calories, and low fat. Wheaties brings out the champion in you. He did it! Flutie did it! Touchdown! seems like everyone's rushing to get things done faster. But sometimes the best solution is to slow things down. Budweiser Select starts with the finest American and Bavarian hops. Then we brew it longer, giving the beer a full flavor that's easy to drink. Why do we slow things down to make Budweiser Select? It's worth it. Budweiser Select. Expect everything. The Digital Rebel XT. An 8 megapixel, easy to use on cell phones. Virtually no delay when you snap the picture, and with the ability to see the free frames per second. You never miss the opportunity to catch the impossible. The next generation Digital Rebel XT. Official camera of the NFL and future NFL players everywhere. Welcome back to ESPN presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Boise State, they have never lost this bowl game. They're 3-0 in the MPC Computers Bowl, but right now they're up against it. They trail Boston College 24 to nothing with just 30 minutes remaining in this game. Andre. Boise State, they're going to start with the football. Give me their recipe for success. Well, I think the recipe for success, first and foremost, is to stop with the penalties that, that have basically cost them in this football game, as well as two turnovers early in this second half. So if they could put those things behind them, they've proven that they can move the football against a good BC defense. If they stop with a mistake, they'll give themselves a chance to get back in this ball game. Well, right before we get to that opening kickoff here in the third quarter, let's take a look at the first half statistics brought to you by Suzuki. And Andre, these are the numbers to the first period of play and uh, domination for the most part by BC. Well, and you see right here, third down conversions as well as the turnovers have really hurt 
had the Boise State football team. So the penalty yardage as well, it, it looks even, but it's been at critical times during drives in which they're moving the football against Boston College. It's really cost Dan Hawkins and this Boise State football team. Did you see this coming? We've been around these teams over no, the last couple of days. No, not at all. Not at all. It, it, you know, you, you look at it, it was a great matchup on paper. The win streak here at home for Boise State, with it being a home game essentially for them. And uh, I did not see 24 to love in the first half of this football game. Ball is kicked high and deep. It's returnable. And here come the Broncos. Quinton Jones brings it out. And Jones stumbles close to the 20-yard line. Let's go down to the field. And Heather Cox. Heather. I just caught up with Boise State coach Dan Hawkins. He was very philosophical. He said, I don't mean to sound cliche, but it is really one play at a time. It's not about getting 24 points. It's not about getting seven points. It's just about executing offensively. He said, honestly, we weren't that bad offensively. We just had the turnover, so we're not going to make any adjustments. We just need to keep possession of the ball offensively, guys. Thank you, Heather. Well, we saw two quarterbacks in the first half of play for Boise State. We saw Jared Zabransky, and for two series, we saw Taylor Tharp. Zabransky back under center, get things going here in the third quarter. Make the handoff to Ian Johnson. Little swing out to the tight end, and the pass goes through the midst of Derek Schulman. Well, Zabransky, the first half, 8 out of 15, starts this half with an incompletion, basically an easy throw to his tight end, Derek Schumann, who, uh, who they really got to get involved in this football game if they're going to have some success. He's a big, big part of this Boise State offense in the past game, but they have really, really struggled in terms of turnovers, penalties, and, you know, Zabransky, the thing that you tell him is like, look, it's one play at a time. Don't try to do too much. Let's just get the first seven or the first three points on the board before we try to get ourselves completely back in the game. Hand off. Antoine Carter wrapped up and brought down after a gain of about two. Boston College coming out playing good defense in the third quarter. Alvin Washington and Matthias Kiwanuka combining to bring down Carter. That's big Al Washington. He is healthy again and He's been a real force in the middle of the lineup for well, been, BC. Just been really, really stiff in terms of running the football. They bring in uh, Antoine Carter. They're short yardage. They're trying to get more punch in the middle of the formation, run between the tackles a little bit, show some toughness for Boise State and Boston College. They are just not having it. Third down and eight. Zabransky has his pass complete. Big yard. Lugadu Nene with the catch and a pickup of 16 yards. And you know, it's easy when you play pitch and catch, quarterback and receiver. And Nene had a drop, a huge drop on a third down play early in this in the first half. But right there, well-thrown football, good touch on it over the linebacker. And Nene, very catchable football. He makes a play. They pick up first down. They moved the football against Boston College. It's been turnovers, penalties that have cost them in this football game that's got them in this position. Just manage the football game right now. Ball on the 39-yard line. Bransky quickly out to the side. Pass is complete. Gerard Rapp, good first down yards, a gain of nine. But what I liked most about the play, Gerard Rapp, he didn't hesitate, didn't try to shake the defender, got north and south. This is a quick play. It's designed to get one-on-one -on -one with a receiver and the cornerback out here in this space. Just get it and go north and south. You see him right there. Split the defenders. Get as much as you can. It's an extended run. And when you get it and you end up in second down and one, boy, that's a bonus. Only designed for about four or five yards. But, boy, when you get in this position, now you can go to work. Zabransky's now thrown for 104 yards on the day. Trapped in the backfield. Lee Marks, no place to go. Ray Henderson, Johnny on the spot, drops him for a loss of a couple. That's going to bring up a third down and about four as the troubles continue for Boise State. They continue to shoot themselves in the foot whenever they do something positive. Yeah, they're the miscues. Two failed fourth down attempts, two turnovers that were costly that resulted in touchdowns for BC, and then the seven penalties that had really hurt them offensively. Before the snap, a whistle. Maybe BC may have called a timeout. Timeout. 
Boston College, first charge timeout. So BC has to call a timeout, and we will take a timeout with them. Dan Hawkins trying to urge his team on. They face a very pivotal third down and four when we come back. Introducing the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara. You want more out of life? Suzuki's giving you the green light. Go. Lease the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara for just $1.99 a month for 30 months. Hurry in. the new you beyond the blue at Boise State University. Here at Bronco Stadium, a lot of Boise State fans, as you'd imagine. We're in Boise, Idaho, but there are some <laughs> diehard Boston College fans. And you don't get more diehard than that if That's you're wearing right. like a small condominium on your head. A couple of different ways to show your, your school colors. It has started to rain here in Boise on third and four. They pitch it out. Lee Mark has it, and he is brought down before he can get to the first down marker. Jasmine Williams, back of a play to make the tackle in open field. That's going to bring up a fourth down and short, and they're going to have to punt it away. Jared Zabranski in the offense for the Broncos. They're going to have to leave the field, and that's the last thing that Dan Hawkins wanted his offensive team to do coming out of the locker room here in the third quarter. Yeah, he wanted them to get off to a good start here early in this second half, getting the ball first. Here, you just can't go for it. Maybe if you're across midfield, you take the gamble. You don't want to give Boston College a short field with the lead they have. Kyle Stringer kicks it off. It is short, and it is muffed. Loose ball. Boise State. Not sure who has it. And Boston College. A lot of white jerseys down at the bottom of that pile, but I think maybe one guy down in there. Jasmine Williams is down there, and he may be the guy that comes up with this fumble recovery. Oh, that was a golden opportunity for the Broncos. They had first dibs, couldn't get it, and the ball goes to BC. Yeah, Will Blackman, one of the sure-handed return men in college football. This one kicked a little short. He, he misjudged it, had to really come up for it hard. And boy, you see all the jerseys of uh, Boise State around the football, and Jasmine Williams, the guy that comes up with the fumble recovery. Well, Boise State needed to catch a break, but they do not. Rain may have stopped already. We saw Dan Hawkins put on a jacket with the rain coming down. I think as quickly as it started, it may have stopped. Andre Callender, no place to go. Dropped by Corey Hall. Good defensive play by the junior from yeah. Glenn Ferry. Two-time all-whack defender at his position at linebacker. And I tell you, fighting through blocks. And we talked about him having to really step up and make some plays. Leverage among the guys in front. And there, you see Corey Hall coming in, making a for-sure tackle from that middle linebacker spot. Loss of a yard. Broncos need a stop. Can't afford to fall down much more. Ryan shoots it out left side, incomplete, looking for Larry Lester. That's going to bring up a third 
and 11. You know, one of the few mistakes that Matt Ryan has made today. He basically had a flat curl uh, combination on the right side of the formation, and the flat guy comes open fast. Outflanks the defense. He chooses not to go there trying to wait on the curl. It gets covered up, and now you have nowhere to go with the football. And good coverage on the part of Boise, on the part of Boise State forces Matt Ryan to throw the football away. Ryan on the run. Throws late and behind his receiver, looking for Blackman. It's incomplete. And it's going to be a three and out for Matt Ryan and the Eagles offense. Boy, this Boise State defense has a little bit different look to it here early in this second half. They're going to get some decent field position. They have one of the better return men. Quentin Jones back there returning punts. Averages over 20 yards a punt return. Here today, just 15.3, but he, he's taken two back. He could, he, could, he could go to the house with them. So you, you look at it, they're going to have excellent field position here on this possession. Boise State may be coming after this one. They are. Ayers able to get it out. Low line drive, returnable. Jones has it. And he can't make the first man miss. Heck of a special team play made to drop him quickly. Jasmine Williams drops Jones for a loss of one. See you tonight. Okay. Introducing the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara. You want more out of life? Suzuki's giving you the green light. Go. Lease the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara for just $1.99 a month for 30 months. Hurry in. This is the one I was telling you about. Dude, you can get that same one online for like 120 properties. With all the delicious 99 cent choices on Wendy's Super Value menu, you'll see dollars in a whole new way. There you go. 75 Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers. For 99 cents, get Wendy's famous Junior Bacon Cheeseburger made fresh, hot off the grill. Crispy chicken nuggets or our new Junior Barbecue Cheeseburger all on Wendy's Super Value menu. Honey, you look like a million crispy chicken nuggets. Do Wendy's, and for 99 cents, do what tastes right. Ooh, you okay? Uh, it's this arthritis pain. Arthritis pain? Try my leave. People with arthritis are sharing their good news. Oh. Oh, honey, you've got to try this Aleve. Good news about the strength and safety of Aleve. Oh. Try my Aleve, Mom. It's amazing. Only Aleve has the strength to stop arthritis pain all day with just two pills. That would take eight Tylenol. Oh. Aleve, that's good news you'll want to share. And for powerful cold relief, find Aleve Cold and Sinus at the pharmacy if it's not on the shelf. Fred Miller considers his father's field politics, but realizes the world needs a great beer more than it needs another politician. Good call, Fred. Pick up some 1855 lager, our tribute to Fred's first beer. ESPN College Football, the NPC Computers Bowl, is brought to you by Suzuki. Introducing the all-new Grand Vitara, the authentic SUV. And a lead, safe and strong, all day long. Welcome back to the capital city of Idaho. We're in Boise, where the rain is coming down in full force. Boise State taking on Boston College in the MPC Computers Bowl. First time these two teams have ever met. Out on the edge, Cole Classen makes a couple of guys miss and picks up nine yards on first down before Jalon Dunbar able to wrap him up and bring him to the blue turf. Yeah, it's not just a miss. It is a full-blown rain that's going down here in Boise State. So that's going to change the dynamics of this football game a little bit in terms of, you know, who can hold on to it, who's used to playing in the conditions. Both quarterbacks will be affected because there's a little wind to go along with the rain. So... Stay tuned for this one. Zabransky, he's, he's played in a few of these where he's had some bad weather games. And so has Matt Ryan. Afraid out there in Boston, weather's you'd not imagine, ideal. You'd imagine both these schools not yeah. too afraid of the wet stuff. And off. Mark brought down in the backfield. Heck of a defensive play by the middle backer, Ray Anderson. 
Ray Anderson, as advertised, he's been a force today. Yeah, Josh Bean helping out as well, but you see him right in the middle of the formation. Ray Henderson's going to show up. You see him creeping up right there and at, from the linebacker position. And there's the hole. He vac it vacates. He uses his speed to track down Lee Marks. Well timed on the part. When you recognize it, you see the guard go away. It's a handoff. The linebacker's going to feel. Boy, he showed his speed then to get to, uh, get to the runner. Boise State goes from second and one to now third and five after the loss of four. Zabransky wants a bunch. Has a man complete across midfield heck of a play made on that pitch and catch a gain of 23 yards and now boise state starting to cook with gas the big jared hunter the tight end you'll see him coming to your screen just working across the middle finds a soft spot in the zone in front of the free safety number 24 ryan glasper and zabranski is impressive with some passes he's into the wind now but he, I tell you, he's knifing them through. He's had some scrambles where he's throwing the ball on the move. He can make all the throws. Inside run. Down to the 40-yard line goes Ian Johnson. Pick up a five on first down. Now Ian Johnson, the redshirt freshman who steps in. They, they think he has got a bright, bright future here at Boise State. When Lee Marks leaves and Antoine Carter, they've done it, but running back by committee, and he stepped right in when given his reps and performed just as the other three have. Boise State, 9-3 and three on the year. They're champions of the Western Athletic Conference, going 7-1 and one in conference play. Lee Marks had a crease, and then that crease closed. Dunbar comes up and wraps him down at the 40-yard line as the rain is really coming down hard now. Yeah, I mean, it, it is coming down a bunch. There's a flag on the play here. They have a little extra after the uh, after the play, and I think it's going to be on number 40, Jolon Dunbar. A little extra celebration. Well, that's yeah. going to prompt a meeting on the sideline between Dunbar and the coaching staff. And folks, that's not just rain; that's hail coming down here at Bronco Stadium. The players seem to love it. BC, I don't know, give me some more. I don't know at what point this gets dangerous. Because it is it is coming down very hard. You see here the tackle by Jolon Dunbar and Lee Marks, and then just a little bit extra right there. A little shove to the uh, attention of the official. But this is uh, this is hail coming down in uh, pretty good size hail. First down and ten. Ball on the 24-yard line. They want to stay on the ground. Ian Johnson powers his way across the 20, a pickup of five. Well, they've energized this crowd as well. Nobody's moving. Right here supporting their home team, Boise State. And at every positive yard, the crowd's giving them a cheer. And I tell you, as a player, you can feel that. You feel when the crowd gets involved in it. You feel the energy coming from the stadium itself. And, you know, they're behind you. You're at home. It gives you a little pick-me-up. Just enough. Andre, kind of hard to believe, but this is the deepest penetration yeah. of the game for Boise State. Schumann goes in motion. Fake to the back going through, and Zabransky wants a touchdown. Back of the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Legadu Nene. Zabransky had completed his last four tosses, but that one a little bit wayward. Take a look at Boise State. The numbers surrounding this program sensational, especially considering they just went to Division 1A mm -hmm. in 1996. Look at that. Since 2000, a winning percentage of 840 tied with Georgia for fourth best in the country. That's just, that's just five years. You back it up about eight more and they're third. Next is behind Texas and Miami with 79 wins, 82 apiece for those two programs. So they've, uh, they've had some pretty good success here at Boise State. Zabransky sets up a screen. It's complete, but they're not going to have enough for the first down. Pick up maybe a yard. It's going to bring up a fourth down at five. Yeah. Ryzen James had that catch. And Larry Anam, the uh, defensive back to that side, read it out well. They're trying to pull Big Darren College out to kick out on the corner on the outside. He makes a heck of a play sliding underneath and uh, basically stopping the screen pass before it gets started because there is plenty of room to run 
had he caught the football and been off to the races. It's a fourth down at five. Did Dan Hawkins have any thought of a field goal here? I don't think so. I think Dan's thinking seven points and get back in this football game. Zabransky throws behind his receiver. Jeff Carpenter had a glance off his fingertips, and that's going to give the ball over to Boston College. You know, I don't know if it's just not having much confidence in your kicker. The wind is blowing a lot, but maybe if you're going to have to have three points anyway, maybe you take it right there. Zabransky and Boise State give it over to Boston College. You're quite right in thinking that this is a situation that calls for an absurd British comedy. Drain the pool, get on your board, and wall plant three times. And lose the scarf. How's that? Want incredible entertainment experiences in your lap? Get Intel Centrino mobile technology in your laptop. carefully. Now through January 2nd, due to the high demand for used vehicles, Elmhurst Imports is offering a unique buyback program. Buyers could trade in their vehicle for a new 05 or 06 Kia with Kia's 10-year 100,000 mile limited warranty and have a monthly payment of about the same as their current payment and in many cases with no down payment. If you've considered buying a new vehicle, visit Elmhurst Imports, 727 West Grand Avenue. You walking around with a little extra weight? House and car payments, IRS debt, high interest credit cards, expenses that just seem to pop up? Lose that extra weight for good. Call Debt Stoppers at 888-619-0400 or visit DebtStoppers.net. Chicagoland's premier debt relief agency, Debt Stoppers, 888-619-0400. We'll stop your debt so you can take charge of your life. Toll free number now. Back in Boise, Boston College up 24 to nothing. And yes, the weather has definitely taken a turn for the worse. We've got hail, we've got rain. The clouds have just opened up in the last five minutes. Both teams seem to enjoy it, though both of them in their element. Seems to have energized them a little bit. People on the sidelines certainly getting wet as hail continues to come down, Eric. Thank you, Heather. Looks like you're in your element. You yeah. don't seem to be too disappointed down there. Get her some protection down there. In the hail, and he's standing out in there. Players have helmets. Heather's down there just fighting it. He's tougher than most. Will Blackman reverses field, and Blackman with a seam gets past a couple of defenders. Still on his feet. Blackman with a chance, and he's out of bounds inside the 35 yard line. That man is electric. Boy, you're talking about a playmaker. Will Blackman, just when it seemed like everything was going to shut down. He comes out the other side right here. Just get him the football really quick. And make two guys miss right there. That's why he's so good at punt returns when he gets in the open field now. Another miss right here. No, another broken tackle. Four guys miss before he decides. I've had enough. I'm going to take it out of bounds, get me a little red. With that footwork, you do not want to play him in Twister. Inside run, Whitworth picks up a couple on first down. You know, I think Will Blackman's a guy that his stock... Once the season's over and, and scouts start to analyze him, you can play him on defense, you can play him at wide receiver, you can play him on special teams. He's a guy that, that adds a lot of value to an NFL team when you're talking about a limited amount of roster spots and taking one guy, making him valuable in the, across the entire roster. Will Blackman's going to have himself a chance to play for a long, long time in the NFL. Second down and five. Fake the handoff, play action, rolling right. Ryan dumps it off. As his fullback, no, oh, actually gets it out to Kevin Callinger, his first catch of this of this game, and he gets inside the 20 to the 15. Well, he picked up a heck of a block down the field from Chris Miller, the tight end, and you'll see it. It'll come right into your screen. That's the big fella right there working Chris Miller. He'll release down the field, and here comes the block right there. 
Get your head around. Keep that head on a swivel. You're in the middle of the field. Guys will peel back and knock you off. Chris Miller there for one heck of a block. Man in motion is Lester. Inside handoff goes to Whitworth. He gets to about the 13-yard line. Pick up of two. Well, this is where Boston College so fundamentally sound. They get down inside the red zone. They seem to always come away with points. Don't turn the football over. Matt Ryan has learned it on the job. Young quarterbacks take care of the football. If guys aren't open, sail it out of the back of the end zone. That's not the worst play you can make. Then come back, kick a field goal on fourth down. Here, second down, a lot of room to work. Whitworth, another carry. Breaks a couple of tackles, gets inside the 10. It'll bring up a third down and short. This drive was set up by the 49-yard catch and run by Will Blackman. And Blackman, talk about the day that he's starting to have. He has catches of 49 yards, of 35 yards, and a 52-yarder as well. Will Blackman with four catches now, 142 yards. He's bucking the play of the game on it. Yeah, and he was on the defensive side of the football, and they needed a playmaker at wide receiver, a guy that could really make it happen. They had Chris Miller at tight end, the two running backs, finally got the quarterback position settled. They thought Porter was going to be the guy. He had an ankle injury, but he has really stepped up at the wide receiver position. And Ryan just throwing it away as he was under duress. So a third down and short is a pass incomplete out of bounds, and it'll bring up the field goal team and a smart play you don't want to try to squeeze one in over the middle where it gets tipped up and intercepted where you take points off the board this is essentially a gimme you never know until the kick goes through the uprights but you're thinking this is a gimme three points for our football team i'm going to go ahead and throw it away and take a shot at this field goal again. ryan oliger will come on and attempt a 27 yarder made one from 30 yards in the first half no worries with Oliger. He's two for two, and BC starting to flex a muscle. They're ahead of Boise State, 27 to nothing. A different kind of New Year's Eve countdown, 11 p.m. on ESPN2. Pizza Hut proudly presents the Pick Your Pair promotion. Just pick a pair of top it and pick a pair of top it, then pick a pair of crust. For a personally picked pair of pizzas. It's a Pick Your Pair deal at Pizza Hut. Buy two medium pizzas with up to two toppings on any one of our famous crusts for only $6.99 each. $6.99? That's cute. A pittance of pizzas piled so high. $6.99? That's a great deal. You think they know we're not twins? Feed a lot of family for not a lot of money with the Pick Your Pair deal at Pizza Hut. Pack your bags. You're going to band camp. Get a little closer, lady. Oh, my God. Instruments in such odd places. American Pie presents Stay Fast Band Camp on an all-new unrated DVD. Own it today. See you tonight. Okay. Introducing the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara. You want more out of life? Suzuki's giving you the green light. Go. Lease the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara for just $1.99 a month for 30 months. Hurry in. I can report a claim 24-7. Bob, you'll never get his car repaired out here. <laughs> Not true. With its direct repair program, insurance can always find your reliable body shop. But what if he had his own body shop? At insurance, it's your choice. If you're on the go, you've got to have insurance. Save on 24-7 claim service. Visit insurance.com today. Today's game is being brought to you in spectacular high definition by Phillips. And folks, you don't need that higher resolution to see that Boston College is starting to feel their oats. They're playing fantastic football against the Broncos of Boise State. The score is now 27 to nothing. 
BC has made very few mistakes right. offensively or defensively. They've been faced with a couple of fourth down situations where they've really responded, held Boise State, and then they go down and they get points of their own, making it, making it tough to get back in the football game. Quentin Jones starts from his own two-yard line, gets out to the 15, tries to reverse his field, and he dives across the 20 to the 22-yard line. That is where the Broncos of Boise State will take over offensively. Remember, folks, here on this blue turf, Boise State is next to invincible. They've won 31 consecutive home games here at Bronco Stadium on the year. They've averaged 47 points per game well, in their home games. They say, right now, they got a goose egg. You know, they say Superman fears kryptonite, makes them weak. I think Boston College has got a stick of kryptonite under that helmet or shoulder pads or something because they have the answer right now on the blue turf. 31 game winning streak here at home is the longest winning streak currently in the country. Deep out, pass is complete to Gerard Rabb. Rabb has enough for a first down, pick up of 14 yards. Well, and they've, they've moved the ball well and they've gotten themselves into some situations where they've had to go for it on fourth down. Knowing that it's four down territory, you run plays on third down and maybe get you half of it and make it just a little bit shorter if you're going to go for it. Uh, on fourth down to get yourself back in this football game. And they're a good throw and catch, and they've done that throughout most of this football game. Just been unfortunate, a couple of turnovers and penalties to go along with it. And off, on the right side. Pushed out of bounds, about the 39-yard line, after a pickup of four. On that carry, Lee Marks pushed out of bounds. A big Jeff Burns. Helped escort him out of bounds, but Lee Marks, nice gain on first down in the running game. They had the big pass play outside to Rab, and then they come back with a run to Lee Marks and shuffling in a lot of personnel. This Boise State offense. You saw that uh, factoid that last time they lost at home, Boise State was uh, in 2001. That was actually Dan Hawkins' first yep. home game as the head coach for the Broncos. This is his last home game as the coach of the Broncos. Trying to get wide, Jeff Carpenter is tripped and felled at the 40-yard line. Ryan Glasper with the stop. Well, on Sunday, yeah. January 1st, officially, Dan Hawkins will take those sensational marks that he's achieved here at Boise State and Head down the road to Boulder, where we'll take over for the Colorado Buffaloes. He replaces Gary Barnett, who won his share of games, but towards the tail end of the season, really struggled with yeah. Colorado. A couple of waxings, particularly against Texas in the Big 12 championship game, and that necessitated the change at Colorado. Dan Hawkins will take over, and Chris Peterson, who you just saw, will leave his booth as the offensive coordinator and go down on the field and take over that headset for Dan Hawkins. Yeah, Zabransky there. I mean, he's got the big arm, and sometimes it's tough for a quarterback to throttle that thing back to learn the touch aspect of playing quarterback. They just needed to flip one in to his running back. Uh, Carpenter just let him get started. Boy, he throws one too hard, and his running back can't handle it. Dewan Tribble makes the fair catch, and it is going to be ball on the 16-yard line for Boston College. For more on Dan Hawkins, let's go down to Heather Cox. Heather, what's going on? Well, the big question is, how does the Boulder community feel about their new coach, Dan Hawkins? Well, judging by the local newspapers, this is a community that is ripe for change and eagerly awaiting Hawks' arrival. Headlines like Head Buffalo, coach already a winner off the field, and Hawkins fit to be a buff, have been plastered across the papers all week. And this is a town already enamored with its new head coach. The buff faithful are very anxious for the turnaround and changes promised by Coach Hawkins already. Well, I'll tell you what, they'll, they'll, they're getting a football coach who will leave it all on the field. He, he will coach to win the ball games and it will exhaust every resource to win. Andre Callender, the deep back for Boston College, and they're going to start on the ground. They hand it off to him. He picks up a couple. Well, Andre, your thoughts on Dan Hawkins still here at Boise State. Should he still be coaching this game? Well, I think so. And when I talked to him about that very thing, he said, look, I always preach to my players 
to finish, finish plays, finish off-season workouts, finish, you know, in class for the semester. And what would I look like in their eyes if I don't finish this season as their head coach before moving on to Colorado? And I have to agree with him. I mean, I think he, he has earned the right to coach this football game before moving on. It's his transition period, certainly, but uh, he has earned the right to stand on the sideline and be the head coach here today. On second down, throw, tip, and incomplete. Will Blackman, the intended receiver, has it glance off of his fingertips. Heather, do you have more? I do indeed. I talked to Coach Hawkins before the game about his emotions and this being the final game. He said, I talked to the team last night, especially the seniors. I told stories about each senior and said, you know, this is a continuum. I will be in your lives forever. I hope that you're in my life forever. And then I asked him about watching Colorado play in the bowl game yesterday against Clemson. And he said, yeah, in fact, I walked into the locker room. The entire team was watching it. And they all yelled, hey, Hawk, they need you bad. We understand why you're going. Go help these buffs out. So this is a very understanding Boise State squad. Third down and eight. Ryan wants to throw. And he wants a bunch. Throws deep. Had his man, but a little bit too far looking for Tony Gonzalez and that'll bring up a fourth down in the punting unit yeah a lot of bumping going on maybe you know Tony Gonzalez thinking he's going to draw a flag there but no call by the official and Boise State stepping up here in the second half of this football game so far so Matt Ryan and the BC offense heads to the sideline looks like Boise State will take over the football yeah they've been known they can score fast I mean this is an offense that gives them the ability in the scheme to put points on the board at a rapid pace so it is long from being over in this football game Quentin Jones fields at the 35 and Jones might oh man he was fucked down some aggression Jolon Dunbar with the stick that was an angry hit right there <laughs> Loving in at the Will side linebacker for Brian Toll. He's played with a lot of emotion. Well, tonight, ESPN's bowl doubleheader continues when the Michigan Wolverines take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. That's at 8 Eastern time. The MasterCard Alamo Bowl is part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Combine these two schools. Talk about tradition and success. Combined, 1,640 victories. It's impressive. There's some championships involved in those oh, pictures yeah. as well. Zabransky wants a bunch, has a man, it's complete. Touchdown, Bryson James. Well, we just talked about Boise State and their ability to strike fast within the scheme of what they do offensively. And right there, they waste no time putting the ball in the air. Zabransky right on time to James Grisham, and it's just a flat-out post route. Going to lead the receiver back to the middle of the field. Play-action pass holds the linebackers, allows for Zabransky to get the ball over the top into his receiver, James Grisham's hands, and boy, right back at you comes Boise State. Zabransky, 53 yards to Dryson James. Before that play, the longest play they had the entire game was 25 yards. But they double that and yeah. then some and put seven on the board. And they get the speed receiver, Dryson James, outside, matched up on the corner. And he's just going to flat out run and get past and behind the secondary. And it's because of the play action pass. Right here, just a nice post route to the top. You'll see the play action pass here by the quarterback. Zabransky, and then it's over the top. Holding the safety, you see the little hitch with the shoulders, holding the safety inside, allowing for the throw over the top to Dryson James. So a little bit of a pulse for the Broncos now. Well, you see him step in, he knew he'd let a good pass go. Sometimes you just feel it as a quarterback, you know. All I gotta do is just let him run under it. Well-thrown football. Zabransky with 116 of his 195 yards coming in this quarter alone he now has 18 touchdown passes on the year for Dryson James that's just his second score but it comes at an opportune time well they really needed that that's the shot in the arm that may turn this football game around 124 still left in the third quarter an entire quarter to go and that brings me back to one thing that field goal the fourth the last fourth down attempt 
that Hawk went for. Thought maybe he should have kicked the field goal there. They were going to need, that point is 24 love. You're going to need a field goal to get back in it anyway. They were at point blank range. Go ahead, kick the field goal and come away with some points on that possession. Well, they went for it instead and they came up short on fourth down to give the ball back over to BC. Little squib kick and Dewan Tribble just has to jump on the football at the 15 yard line. Taking a look at our stat track, and rushing game has belonged to Boston College. Passing yards, well, it was being won handily by Boston College, but after yeah. that 53-yard catch and run, BC sneaking back into it, and now total yards, pretty even. But a big difference, how about fourth down conversions? Yeah, 0 for 3 and 100% for Boston College when they had to go for it on fourth down. I'll tell you the story in this football game, the early turnovers, by Boise State resulting in points for Boston College and now you're fighting an uphill battle but not one that they're ready to surrender quite yet here in Boise. Maybe the fans starting to believe here at Bronco Stadium. Ryan using those good wheels gets out close to the 25 yard line a pickup of nine yards on first down. Well you don't want to just label him as a good game manager because you know people talk about that all the time. I think it's he kind of handcuffs the quarterback. I think he is just a good football player. Matt Ryan and his days are going to get better as he grows and gets a little bit older each and every snap that he takes, each and every defense that he gets a chance to see. He's going to be a quarterback we'll talk about at Boston College for quite some time. Two years left, uh, and just a sophomore, but he makes good, sound decisions. Second and one, they flip it out to Blackman. That's his fifth catch of the game. Showing some power for a little fella. Buries the head and gets across the first down line and picks up an extra set of downs for the Eagles. That's not too small. 6'1", 200-pound receiver. And boy, he is just a flash of lightning when he gets the football in his hands in the open field. You can forget about it. The first guy that shows up can forget about bringing down Will Blackman. He's going to make him miss. He gets the ball. You better show up in number. Hand off. Trying the right side is Whitworth. Reverses his field and nowhere to go. That strong middle side of the Broncos defense wraps him up and brings him down close to the line of scrimmage. Alex Guerrero once again. Quarterback comparison here. He's a Bransky. Not a bad afternoon. 15 of 25. He had the early interception on I think it was the first or second drive in this ball game but Matt Ryan playing a solid football game three touchdown passes and two of those I think came as a result of turnovers from uh, Boise State so yeah, I'll tell you a tough task for Boise to get back in this one but a lot of time left in this ball game Ryan throws late across the middle Chris Miller can't make the catch incomplete Marty Tadman on the coverage. Yeah, Marty Tadman's made a couple of good plays in the middle of the field. They blitzed, and he knocked one away from Will Blackman. And then there, showing up again in the middle of the formation, Marty Tadman. What you do? You got to regulate from the middle of the field. If you're the free safety of the football team, he is a fierce hitter, and you cross the middle of the field. He'll lay his helmet and shoulder pads on you. Tom O'Brien's team. A well, big down here for Boise State. Want to get off the field. You get them in third and long, you definitely want to get yourself off the field. Give that offense a chance to strike again. Ryan. Under pressure. Throws late. Intercepted. Fumbled on the field, and the Broncos have the football. And they're going to say it's an interception. He, took a, he, put a, he put the football away. Took a couple of steps with it, and then the ball comes out. So you're going to see it right in the middle of the formation. The, 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 the. Now they're saying no. No, it is. It's oh, a yeah. Boise State football. Marty Tadman had the interception. The ball was not loose, and the Broncos recover. Now you see Matt Ryan right here trying to force one in the middle, and Tadman right there. Marty Tadman, he's got the football. This one may get reviewed because he's trying to bring it in before it's, it's knocked away. But right there, breaking on the football, trying to put it away. This one may, uh, they may review this. And Boise State might want to get to the line of scrimmage and snap the football. And it's going to be Boise State football. No it, was, it, was, you know, it was looked at, but they decided that there wasn't. 
a wrong call on the field and a big play on first down. Vinny Peretta has the catch inside the 10 and a late flag fly. Well, another, maybe another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and this is not uh, what you see from a Tom O'Brien football team. Very much the disciplinarian as the head coach of Boston College. We'll get the official word here. Very unlike a Tom O'Brien coach team. Ryan Glasper called for unsportsmanlike conduct. That's the third such call on BC. The fourth quarter is right around the bend. Ohio State Notre Dame, the Tokyo Fiesta Bowl, Monday on ABC. decongestants in these medicines can raise your blood pressure. So why take them? Take decongestant-free Corocetin HBP, powerful relief that won't raise your blood pressure. Between my two phone bills, it's probably about $60 a month. About $150. It's probably 100 bucks a month. With Vomit, you get unlimited calls to anywhere in the U.S. and Canada, and all the cool features you could ever want are included. And it's just $24.99 a month. Call 1-800-972-4866 and get your first month free. This offer is also available online and at these fine retailers. Vomit. About five minutes. So you think we're gonna make it? Do we ever make it? Oh, here we go. This is gonna hurt. Now you can pause any movie you order and start it again whenever you're ready. <laughs> On demand is here. Pick a show, play it whenever. From Comcast Digital Cable. Saturday, New Year's Eve, you are invited to the premiere performance by the Iceman, Jerry Butler. Whoa, what's the new year, man? Check out the Outdoor Laser and Light Show, a lavish buffet, Outdoor Winter Blues Bazaar, a midnight champagne toast, and a continental breakfast at the Harold Washington Cultural Center, 47th and King Drive. Tickets on sale at Ticketmaster.com or 312-559-1212. In stores nationwide. There may be life just yet, left yet, for Boise State. The Broncos, they just scored a touchdown. They're looking for another one. And they just caught a break right here. They yeah, Marty Padman with this interception. But I think, I, I'm thinking it's just an incomplete pass. Right there, that football's not put away. It comes out. I think it's an incomplete pass. Boston College should have been punting there in that under those circumstances. But it was close. Right. It was rolled on the video field evidence yeah. to, to overturn it. I'm not totally sure that was all there. Uh, it was close. From that angle, it looked like an incomplete pass. Heck of a play. Ian Johnson in the game at tailback. Ball on the five-yard line. Zabransky has a man wide open, and he can't find him. Over the head of Rab. Well, I tell you, and keep in mind, he's throwing a wet football, and, and it's an easy pass. Sometimes they pop wide open for you as a quarterback, and the ones that pop wide open are the difficult ones to complete. Right here, settling down, just throttling down. You see him right there, wide open. Nobody there, kind of giving the look as if you're going to block. And then throttling down, getting in the back of the end zone, and all you got to do is give him a catchable football. Just lob it. Ball looks dry right there, though, doesn't it? Antoine Carter. Hit hard at the two-yard line and thrown to the ground. Ray Henderson. Yeah, their short yard specialist. Is Antoine Carter, and they brought him in earlier in this football game to try to establish a more physical presence. And Boston College really not having it. You don't get very many looks down here inside the five-yard line. We talked about that earlier. Dan Hawkins said, "Hey, there's just not a whole lot of film on Boston College down inside the goal, you know goal line situation." 
Zabransky, little option, fake, and scores the touchdown. And don't look now, but Boise State right back in this game. Marty Tabman, a big reason why he got the football back for the Broncos. And Juan Tribble is the guy that uh, went for the fake. And a good job of showing the football to the running back and to the defensive back. Right here, you're going to see Zabransky. The end man on the line of scrimmage is his option key. Once he takes the pitch man, it's Zabransky into the end zone, untouched. Two touchdowns in a little over two minutes for the Broncos. And pending this extra point, they're within two touchdowns. Extra point is good, and the Broncos down by just 13 points. Bush, we have a game with 14 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Well, coming up after our game is the MasterCard Alamo Bowl for a preview. Let's go to Mike Carrico. Mike. Thank you, Eric, and we welcome you to San Antonio, Texas. The Nebraska Cornhuskers are essentially playing a home game. They have the majority of the fans here in the Alamo Dome. They are so glad that after a three-decade run of bowl games in a row, stopped last year, they are back this year. Michigan is thrilled to have that guy back. The best freshman and running back in the Big Ten last year, Mike Hart, has missed most of this season because of a couple of injuries. An ankle injury in October has really slowed Hart down, but he is back, and he's as healthy as he has been all year. The winningest program and the fourth winningest program in the history of college football. Michigan, Nebraska. Sounds good. We think it's going to be good. Kick off as soon as you guys are done in Boise. Back to Eric and Andre. Thanks, Mike, and that should be a good yeah, football you, game. You just mentioned Nebraska, and you <laughs> mentioned Michigan. You get excited. Oh, yeah. I mean, you start thinking about college football, and for so many years, all the success that both those programs have uh, have had over the years and the getting together in a bowl game down in San Antonio makes for a good, good recipe for a good football game. Boise State with new life. Down by just 13. They kick it away. And on one bounce, Juan Tribble fumbles the football, muffs it, and picks it up at the 13-yard line. Tom O'Brien's team continues to struggle here in the fourth quarter. Well, you see right here, the end man on the line of scrimmage becomes the option key for Zabransky right there. Freeze it. Once he, once he takes the pitch man outside, then you can walk into the end zone. Right here, you see the end man right here. You're going to fake it. Actually, this is the the, uh, the play before when he had him wide open into the end zone and let one get away. High throw, up and out of bounds. The Boise State back in this game. And the fans back into this game. This is the fourth consecutive drive where the Eagles have started inside their own 20. Ryan sneaks it out, passes complete. His fullback, Mark Palmer, with the catch and goes out of bounds. Well, he made a mistake a drive ago by throwing the interception that allowed for the Boise State touchdown. But they're taking care of the football, and you, you know, you, all it takes sometimes is one of those to learn. You're a young quarterback, smart, good with the football, making sound decisions, and you're trying something. You're trying to wheel one in there for a first down. And you throw a bad pass, you won't go back. You don't revisit that. I don't look for Matt Ryan to throw into coverage again in this football game. Andre Callender tries the middle, and he is brought down. Austin Smith comes up from his rover spot and brings him down. Andre, I'm not sure that this game isn't exactly what Tom O'Brien wants. He wanted to lead fourth quarter, and it's big boys wearing down yeah. Boise State. And that's that's his recipe for winning football games, is that he'll let that big offensive line just kind of lean on you. They're, they overmatch just about everybody they play late in the football games. If they have a lead, they're going to go to the run. Some nice, sound passes that they take care of the football, but the running game is what brings them home at Boston College. Out of the shotgun. Ryan flips it out. Callender has it, and Callender with the first down. Flip the tackle, gets out to the 30, and Tom O'Brien's bunch will be able to bleed some more clock. Well, they only rushed two defensive linemen here and had about nine guys in coverage, so you look at it, it's a very short 
field to go for the first down, but you see the average line uh, for Boston College, 6'6", 314. We just talked about that. Tallest and heaviest in the ACC, probably in most conferences across the country. They're going to be the tallest and the heaviest, but that surprised me. That defensive call by Boise State, just rushing two guys. They needed, what, third down, and it was third and medium, third and four, and you could basically just hand it off and run up the middle of the formation with only two defensive linemen in the game. Callender again breaks tackles and again with good yards. Picks up nine yards on first down, getting close to the 40-yard line before Corey Hall makes the stop. Well, he got a great block from Patrick Ross, the center, who is pulling around on the outside. They go down with the guard back inside and pull the center around, and he's just chopping down uh, players on the edge of the defense, which allowed Callender to turn the corner and pick up about nine yards. Second down and one. They stay on the ground behind those big fellas, and they get another first down. Andre, they're not just big. They're not just strong, but they are experienced along that offensive line for Boston College. Take a look at those numbers. Everyone, at least a two-year starter, Patrick Ross and True Blood, they started for three consecutive seasons. Yeah, a lot of experience, and that's why they can rely on those big guys late in football games. They know that they're not going to make mistakes. You don't get a whole lot of holding penalties and things of that sort that kill drives for them late in ball games. They want the game in their hands at the end of the game. Get them started. Get them in sync with one another, like fingers in a glove, the offensive line. Again on the ground, again with Callender. He is the bruiser of their two backs that they alternate. We also see L.B. Whitworth, yeah. more of their outside slasher type of guy. And you see late in the game, you talk about the success offensively, that they want to you know, unleash their physical presence on you. Well, they bring in the guy, the big pounder, and Andre uh, Callender, the, 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 the tailback there, more of a pounding type runner, inside type runner. Whitworth, as you just mentioned, he's an edge type guy. Quickness and speed on the edge. Pounding you inside is the uh, the youngster with Andre Callender. Second and seven. Let's see if they stay on the ground. They do. Callender likes that left side. Dives forward. Gets out to about the 48-yard line. He's going to bring up a third down and short. Well, you see, even late in the ball game. They protect the passer well last year. They gave up 23 sacks on the year. That's a low number. But then they topped it this year with just 13 sacks on the season. Only one given up today. So they not only can they run block well, they take care of the guy pulling the trigger behind the center. Callender has touched the ball on each of the last six plays for Boston College. Let's see if Matt Ryan looks for him here. Roll out right side. Ryan, no one home. He's dropped for a walk. Well, Good defensive <laughs> play. Chris Barrio with the stop and the sack. Just the second sack allowed by Boston College on the day. We just talked about the great protection that they provide, but you see here, great defensively in terms of pass coverage. They, go, they finally go man-to-man. -man. You see guys locked up right here. Nowhere to throw the football, but locked up man-to-man -man all across the field. Boise State, maybe a different look that Matt Ryan wasn't expecting on that down and distance. Boise State throwing him a little curveball. They're going to get the football back here with a lot of time. Clinton Jones awaiting this Johnny Ayers punt. Good punt. Jones inside the 10, almost falls down at the 5, and a disastrous decision for Quinton Jones and Boise State. They're going to be up against their own goalposts when we come back. Jared Zabransky has his work cut out for him, 95 yards away from Tater when we come back. FedEx Ground will get these to Cleveland on Wednesday. FedEx? Aren't they a little pricey? Ned, you're always wrong. How am I always wrong? Okay, let's review. Steely Dan is not one person. We get fringe benefits, not French benefits. James Dean is an actor. Jimmy Dean makes sausage. And you know what, Ned? It's not the Leaning Tower of Pizza. So FedEx isn't too expensive? We don't get French benefits. FedEx Ground. Reliability for less than you think.
1855, Fred Miller brews his best beer yet. It has everything except the name. Then it hits you. Fred Miller's beer. Good call, Fred. Pick up some 1855 lagers, our tribute to Fred's first beer. Everybody wants it. Juliana is nominated for two Golden Globes, including Best Supporting Actor, George Clooney. Why am I being investigated? And hailed as one of the best films of the year. Who's worried about me talking? Who's worried? Juliana, rated R, now playing. Protect your family with life insurance from Prudential. Hey, Dad, what's life insurance? Well, life insurance is uh, something parents buy. So, in case something happens to them, you kids will be okay. Oh. Do we have life insurance? <laughs> yeah, we do. Good. Yeah, it is good. Welcome to the SUV Championship. Anybody riding SUV? Not everybody rides it right. Pushing it too hard. Without respect for what they're capable of, it's easy to see why a lot of riders take the role. SUVs are big, powerful, and on top of one, you just feel almost invincible. Easy now, Big Bell. Keeping your SUV in all fours. That's the idea, right? Ooh. A different kind of New Year's Eve countdown, 11 p.m. on ESPN2. And here come the Huskers. Nebraska back in the postseason and getting set to square off against Michigan in the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. We'll get you to San Antonio just as soon as we see if Boise State can give BC a finish here. We shall see Reese, some brave souls here at Bronco Stadium. Seeing if their Boise State Broncos can brave a little bit of a comeback. Jared Zabransky barking out his thunderous command in there, making sure that everyone's on the same page. They have a long way to go if they want to get a touchdown on this drive. They are pinned back inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, a lot of self-inflicted wounds <laughs> for Boise State football team there. I thought Quentin Jones should have let that ball go into the end zone. It had much better field position at the 20-yard line. But here, long field to go to get some some points on the board. The ball is on the seven yard line. Zabransky may have gotten B.J. Raji to move in the middle of the line. They run on first down and a pickup of a couple for Carpenter. But it looked like there was movement up front for Boston College. Yeah, it looked like one of the defensive linemen, B.J. Raji. And it was uh, the guy that jumps offside, so get your little Get yourself a little wiggle room down here. They'll pick up uh, an easy five yards. It'll be first and five on the 12-yard line. See if you follow me, Colin. If you got first down, you just got a free five yards. What would you do to hit? Uh, if I was Andre Ware, I would throw deep. That's right. Take a shot. Let's see if they think along the same wavelength. A little controlled pass. It's caught, and out of bounds goes Legadoo Nene. Go down in the field and Heather Cox. Heather. Well, guys, in case you missed it at halftime, the story of Matthias Kiwanuka bears telling. His grandfather, Benedicto, was the first prime minister of Uganda and was assassinated by Idi Amin's regime. Now, Kiwanuka honors his grandfather with that tattoo of the Ugandan presidential seal on his back and shows loyalty with the Ugandan flag that hangs in his room. Now, he's likely a first-round draft pick, and instead of thinking about big money, he's thinking about how he can help with the AIDS epidemic and hunger in his East African country. And I talked to him yesterday, and he said, my grandfather taught me to stand up for what you believe in. Whatever you do, leave a positive mark on this world. And he said, I'm inspired by the sacrifice he gave. I'd like to think in the same position. I'd make those same choices, guys. Heather, thank you so much. Zabransky is brought down in the backfield. Sacked by Alvin Washington. A lot of pressure there. Boston College has been showing a lot of zone. Finally, they bring the linebackers there and they get to Zembranski to kind of disrupt things. You're going to see it right here. A lot of guys around the line of scrimmage. You see the blitzers coming from the edges. Linebackers, corners from the short side of the field. Jasmine Williams comes as well. And they finally get there, but just allowing, not allowing for a lot of time there. I tell you, I have been impressed with Messiah Sakiwanuka as much as any college football player that I've ever come in contact with. He's a very mild-mannered guy. He is a guy that will be drafted very high and will play well on Sunday. 
Zabransky throws it out. It is complete to Nene. Goes out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. He just has that quiet confidence about him. I mean, he's not a big rah-rah guy. You see him high-five his teammates, but they feed from him. I mean, he, he, when he plays, he's, he's, the, he's not so much a vocal leader. I mean, when he needs to pick the team up, he can do it in that manner, but he'd rather show you through his play and have you follow him in that manner. He's going to be impressive at the combine. Oh, yeah. But he's going to be really impressive personal interview. He's oh, yeah. the type of guy. He just that's where he. That's exactly where he'll sell himself. Third down and 11. Huge play for the Broncos. Zabransky makes one tackler miss. Zabransky makes two miss. Throws deep. Nobody home looking for Vinny Peretta. Closely guarded. Incomplete. Good coverage played deep downfield by Jamie Silva. Isaiah Kiwanuka was in the grill of Jared Zabransky. Yeah, and he got chopped down by the big offensive lineman, Darren College. On the uh, initially, you'll see it here. College playing some pretty good football of his own, right there, inviting him, then chops him down. But right there, getting up, fighting to the quarterback, he misses there. Watch him; he's not done yet. He comes back into the screen later on to get uh, right around the waist of Zembranski. But you talk about playing to every whistle. Matthias Kiwanuka plays every play as if it's his last. Stringer's punt, a low line drive. Juan Tribble on the return, and Tribble. Spins out to about the 49-yard line, but there is a flag at about the 40-yard line. And Josh Bean with a good special teams play. You get the word here. It's usually on the receiving team, some block in the back or a hold of some sort. You get the official word here. Block in the back. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so Tom O'Brien's team will march backward, but they will have the ball and an opportunity to bleed some clock. You want me to buy some seeds from a company I've never heard of? And who are these guys? These, I know. Thought we were having a meeting. NPC Computers is one of the top PC companies in the country. We're getting all the technology we want, and no one touches NPC's service and support. They all say that at first. Just, just a moment. Who is it? It's technical support at NPC Computers. They're on the line. That fast? Who are these guys? Energizer E-squared lithium batteries let you take up to 600 photos and digital cameras versus up to just 90 with leading ordinary alkaline batteries. Energizer E-squared lithium keeps going and going. We had a merry time pillaging. But with so many people switching to Capital One, we've had to find new jobs. Christmas is our dignity. For low rates and great rewards, switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? I'm making a list. This is the one I was telling you about. Dude, you can get that same one online for like 120 frosties. With all the delicious 99 cent choices on Wendy's Super Value menu, you'll see dollars in a whole new way. There you go. 75 Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers. For 99 cents, get Wendy's famous Junior Bacon Cheeseburger made fresh, hot off the grill. Crispy chicken nuggets or our new Junior Barbecue Cheeseburger, all on Wendy's Super Value menu. Honey, you look like a million crispy chicken nuggets. Do Wendy's, and for 99 cents, do what tastes right. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times says King Kong is magnificent entertainment. A celebration of every single resource of a blockbuster told in a film of visual beauty and surprising emotional impact. King Kong, rated PG-13. ESPN College Football, the NPC Computers Bowl, is brought to you by NPC Computers. Proud sponsor of the 2005 NPC Computers Bowl. And in part by Capital One. What's in your wallet? The streets of downtown Boise nearly empty and with good reason. The people are here. They're watching the NPC Computers Bowl for the ninth consecutive year here at Bronco Stadium. And right now, the locals not doing so good. Down by 13 points, Boston College trying to salt away a little bit more clock. 27 to 14 is our score. 
Matt Ryan under center. Hands it off. L.B. Whitworth back in the game picks up a couple of yards on first down. Well, yesterday, you know, I, I decided to come out of retirement, <laughs> throw a couple of passes to my uh, my good friend Eric Collins here, and then all of a sudden, that's what happened. I popped a finger on him. I, I, I didn't know, man. I mean, I apologize. I had to get some love. Oh, my goodness. And you see him here. Actually, you know, he got soft on me right there. He had to have his splint. Had it all wrapped up, man. I, I, I apologize. This is the result right here. I, I got to go back into retirement. I didn't know I could still I, throw it like that. I learned my lesson, folks. <laughs> Never play catch with a Heisman <laughs> Trophy Award winner. You throw an uncatchable ball, man. It's hard oh to catch. Oh, man. Oh, we had some fun with that one. Oh, my goodness. Whitworth, another carry. Yeah, definitely want to say thank you. There was tremendous performance by the training staff. Gary Trainer, the head trainer for Boise State, and his, uh, his lead henchman, Brandon Boyd, he was fantastic, putting a little brace on for me. It was, uh, it was a hairy situation. Let's go down to the field. Heather, what's going on? Well, Eric, since a lot, you know, one of my job responsibilities and descriptions is to report on injuries, I thought I'd fill everybody in with a little bit more detail. The rumor is you have a ruptured extensor, digitorum <laughs> superficialis, in other words, you have a ruptured tendon. The rumor is also that you'll be wearing a splint for six weeks. I don't know if your career holding your microphone <laughs> in your right hand is in jeopardy or not. We wish you a speedy recovery. He tried to hide that pinky <laughs> behind his microphone today in our open, but uh, it was uh, clearly visible. My days my of playing catch uh, with Andre <laughs> Ware are long gone. My man, is he's working wounded today, so i got to give it up to him. He sucked it up, and right there, Alex Guerrero is trying to get himself walk off the field get himself back in this ball game he has played one heck of a football game defensively for boise state big play third down and four matt ryan trying to keep his eagles on the field four receivers in the game and before the snap a whistle and timeout is called by boise state that is their second. They still have two timeouts remaining. Well, what's this uh, break in the action? Let's go back to the MasterCard Alamo Bowl where Mike Tirico is standing by. Mike, what's going on? Eric, we are getting set for the 2005 MasterCard Alamo Bowl between Michigan and Nebraska. A pair of seven and four teams. A great American city here in San Antonio. Of course, the city of the Alamo. And the history of these two schools goes back to the 97 season. Michigan won the Rose Bowl. They were the champion for the media, the Associated Press national title. But the very next day at the Orange Bowl, Peyton Manning's Tennessee team, dominated by Nebraska, Tom Osborne, and his team voted the top team in the country by the coaches. So there's some unfinished business for some here tonight, Nebraska and Michigan. They will kick it off as soon as we're done in Boise. Back to Eric and Andre. Thank you so much, Mike. And well, it looked like finally things are starting to change for Nebraska. Bill Callahan's team, definitely a rocky performance a year ago, but this year, towards the end of the season, playing better football. No, they really are. And he's recruited well there as well at Nebraska. So you're going to see them. I, I got a feeling Nebraska's going to be heard from here in the next couple of years. Bill Callahan got the ship pointed in the right direction at Nebraska. Now they had to make some changes, had to get some different personnel in, and now you're starting to see the benefits of that from that program. Big play here after the Boise State timeout. Third down and four. Ryan with all kinds of time. Ryan trying to run for it. Has the first down and more. Loses the football late, but the Eagles pounce on him. Pick up of 12 yards and the clock continues to roll. And that's the spark they look for right there. A place like this, when they inserted Matt Ryan into this lineup, nobody open, just kind of buying time. Then all of a sudden, he sees that there's a hole, and I can pick up the first down with my legs. Right there, get the first down, get myself down, keep this clock moving, and get out of here with a victory. Right there, smart play on the part of Matt Ryan. With those big offensive linemen in front of Ryan, yeah. and sending just three rushers, time can't get there can't get to him zone coverage yeah you're gonna have everybody covered up but in short situations like that third and six third and four well you better have somebody coming after the quarterback Whitworth crosses the 50-yard line a pickup of four yards on first down 
This is the ninth running of the MPC Computers Bowl here in Boise, Idaho, the capital city of Idaho. Game being played at Bronco Stadium. It's the 19th ranked Boston College Eagles coming out of the ACC with an 8-3 record taking on Boise State. Boston College, they have won five consecutive bowl games. That's the longest streak in the country. Dan Hawkins working that sideline for the final game in his five years at Boise State. He is off to Boulder, Colorado, where he will be the new head man with the Colorado Buffalo taking over for Gary Barnett. And who followed Dirk Cutter here as the head coach. He had a pretty big win last night himself at Arizona State. The inside bowl against Rutgers. This team played well and a lot of connections to this Boise State program. Dan Hawkins, one of his Achilles heels was playing BCS teams. Just two and six against teams from BCS conferences in his five years at Boise State. Will his style work in the Big 12? No, I think so. I think he's going to have better recruits. He, he, the program's better. He's going to be able to recruit better there. The personnel uh, in which he runs this system will be better. I, I think he's going to have... Colorado is set for a big, big turnaround under that man there. I mean, he is an excellent motivator. Knows how to get the best out of each and every one of his players. Third down and seven. Matt Ryan on the move, walks one up, has a man, Blackman tries to make the one-handed catch, but can't haul it in. It is incomplete, and BC will have to punt it away. Now keep in mind the big, the quick strike ability of this Boise State football team, and the, the touchdown pass from Zabransky to Dris Dryson James, but here, look at this play, Blackman, just a playmaker. Trying to make a play, he's wrapped up, you see the left arm, or his right arm, the defensive back's left arm gets tangled up and he's trying to bring that baby in with one hand. Excellent concentration on the part of Will Blackman. Just ran out of room along the sideline. Because of the incompletion, the clock stopped temporarily. Now, Quentin Jones, did he learn his lesson from the last time? Field and punch inside the 10-yard line. No, he didn't. Catches it at the eight. And breaks out of a couple of tackles. And this is why he feels those dangerous punts. Quinton Jones down the sideline. Reverses field. He's got a chance. Quinton Jones. Touchdown, Boise State. 92 yards on the return. And that's why he's the second team All-American in the punt return game right there. I'm thinking you don't feel that baby inside the 10-yard line. But he, I forgot who he plays for. He plays for Dan Hawkins, who exhausts every, everything that he has in his bag of tricks right here. Probably told him, look, try to make something happen. Field it wherever you can get it and give us a play right there. Breaking tackles, and then you see the 4-3-40 speed right here, cutting back, and nobody on the field is going to catch Quentin Jones. Dan Hawkins' philosophy, take a chance. Quinton Jones did, and it pays off for seven. And the Broncos of Boise State within six. That is now 21 unanswered points in the last 12 and a half minutes for the Broncos of Boise State. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've got a game. You know what? What? This next scene always makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Oh no, I'll never survive. Ethan, drop that. Go! Yes! One nil. Want incredible entertainment experiences in your lap? Get Intel Centrino mobile technology in your laptop. From a place called Boise, we invite you to escape to a place so unexpected. A world so incredible. It has the power to ignite your imagination. Come visit the city that will capture your heart, your mind, and your soul. Here in spectacular Boise, Idaho. Time is running out to join the Lincoln Mercury family with Keep It Simple pricing. Get the best value for the holiday season on our Consumer's Digest Best Buy winner, the Compact Mercury Mariner. The Mariner Hybrid with 33 miles per gallon city. Wow. The Montego with 29 miles per gallon highway. The redesigned Mountaineer with better V8 mileage. 
Now purchase a new Mercury Mariner for just $19,605 and get an additional $1,000 Ford credit cash, plus a free video iPod. Hurry to your Lincoln Mercury dealer. It's simply our coolest offer ever. December, Shields truly remember at the December to Remember sales event where you'll find the best values of the year on your favorite Lexus vehicle. See your Chicago area Lexus dealer. 99 lunch. Mike Tirico, Kirk Herbstreet, Aaron Andrews in San Antonio. The Wolverines take the field before Michigan, Nebraska in those states. We're going to get you to the start of this game momentarily. And we'll keep you updated on the great finish building in Boise. Back to the Smurf turf and Eric and Andre. Guys? Yeah, Mike, you got it right. Uh, when you said we got a great finish right now <laughs> building because things are getting exciting. I tell you, this crowd has come alive. This Boise State sideline is, uh, is up. Everybody's on their feet and cheering the team or the, the unit that's on the field on. And, boy, we got, we're set for a heck of a finish. Coming on the return, Juan Tribble gets across the 25-yard line to the 26, and you can just see the confidence surging from Dan Hawkins' crew. I'm wondering, though, the drive, fourth down, when they're down close and had the opportunity to kick the field goal to make this, it would have been now, a three-point football game, only needing a field goal. Now you need a touchdown to win the football game as he's questioning himself. I don't like Cornell fourth down. I don't know. I don't think I he's think, the type of guy that looks in the rear. Uh, you know what? I think I think it was, he should have kicked the field goal at that point in time. You needed some momentum. You're going to have to have a field goal anyway in this football game. But now, boy, this is this makes for some good stuff. Good finish here. That was early in the third quarter when they had yet to score a point. Andre Callender has the football. And Callender, a good, strong run, picks up for yards on first down. Yeah, and Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator for Boston College, still going to rely on that big offensive line to try to get some push late in this football game. And you know what? Those guys up front for Boise State, they hung in there. They fought hard. Alex Guerrero has played one heck of a football game. We saw him limp off. He's back right on back on the field now. And I tell you what, it would take a, a, a truck with a bunch of chains to get him out of there to pull it off this football field. He is he is into it. The crowd is into it. Trying to get his teammates to help him out and play at his level. DC just barely gets the playoff and confusion in the backfield results in disaster. Alex Guerrero blows up that play, bringing down Andre Callender for a loss of one. Well, it's, it's like we were in his helmet. And he heard us because all of a sudden he came off and it looked like a mix-up in the backfield right there trying to get the crowd hyped, get them into this football game. They hadn't had a whole lot to cheer about until right now about three minutes left in this football game. Boise State calls timeout. They have one remaining. Still tons of time in this game. Well, you talk about two timeouts. The clock's going to stop with each first down. A lot of time left. Tom O'Brien and his BC Eagles. They have won five consecutive bowl games. But that streak is in jeopardy right now because Boise State, they have momentum on their side playing in front of a friendly home crowd. Down by just six, but they need a stop here on third down. It is third down and seven. Boston College, they've struggled on third down in the second half. They've made just two of eight third down conversions. What's the play call here, Andre? Is everything available, or will they run to keep I, the clock I, I running? Think, I think everything is available because basically you have a lead, and you want to protect it, but you got to be smart with the football, and you need to convert on third down. So you can't close the playbook down, try to run for it, punt and play defense. They've proven that they can score and score fast. Wayward snap! Ryan sack! Colt Brooks got loose and jumps on Ryan, and that play was 
trouble from the get-go. Yeah, it's as if we've watched two totally different football teams for Boston College in the first half of this game and the second half. They've been the ones that have made the mistakes and the penalties that have cost them opportunities in this football game. Bad snap, maybe Matt Ryan looked away a little bit, maybe getting the eyes down the field a little quick and misjudged the snap. But right now, Boise State's going to have excellent field position in this on this drive. Loss of 16 yards, and the punt team has to come on. Last time they punted, Quentin Jones took it back 92 yards. And I'm going to hammer my point to kick that field goal because now you've got a short field. You can tie this football game up with just a field goal had Hawk kicked it early in the third quarter. Dan Hawkins and Boise State, they do not look back. I can assure you of that, my friend. They are perfectly content to be down by six and getting this football coming up to the two-minute mark. Clock running. Ayers almost slips down. Low kick, just getting it out of there, and everyone's going to stay away from the football. Fantastic field position for the Bronco. The Broncos trying to buck the odds. Jared Zabransky trying to make it happen against Matthias Kiwanuka and the BC Eagles here in the final two minutes. And good players usually turn up their uh, their games when they really when the team really needs it and look for this guy to try to assert himself. But you look at the winning streak, the win in 99 for Boise State when they beat Louisville here in this game in this bowl game. 2000 back on the the blue turf. They beat UTEP. 02 was Iowa State. 13-6 and a golden opportunity to stay undefeated in bowl games. They're 3-0 in this MCC Computers Bowl. Zabransky under pressure. Out to Carpenter. Carpenter, good open field running. Gets out to the 40-yard line. A pickup of seven. Boy, what a heck of a job and an athletic play by the quarterback, Jared Zabransky, and a good job of running by Carpenter. He actually broke the tackle of Matthias Kiwanuka in order to pick up the yardage he did, seven yards on that play. Clock continues to roll. Zabransky loses the football, picks it up, and is smothered by Dunbar. But Dunbar has just leveled <laughs> a couple of players for Boise State in this football game. As quickly as they give it, they take it away right there. Eyes down the field, may have misjudged the snap a little bit, and Jolon Dunbar, boy, he shows up, and when he shows up, he's, just, he's angry. I mean, he started the season, he's a backup in the middle to Ray Henderson, but he started this football game for Brian Cole on the outside, and now he's back in there. Boy, he's made some plays. Boise State calls their final timeout. Coming up next, MasterCard Alamo Bowl, Nebraska and Michigan. Coming at you from San Antonio, Texas. Michigan Wolverines ranked 20th in the country, taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who have made some strides this season. The game is now underway. We will get you there the moment this game comes to a close. Dan Hawkins. Some final thoughts with his offensive players. Remember, this is the last game he'll ever coach yeah. with these Broncos. You remember I asked you about kicking that field goal. I'm thinking, you know, maybe you should go ahead and kick the field goal. But I forget, Dan Hawkins, he doesn't play the tie. He plays to win. And, and this is two-down territory for them. And it's with a minute 22 left, one timeout left in this ball game. You know, he's, he's thinking, you know, we get some of it here and then pick up the first down to keep this drive going. But they are going to try to get this baby into the end zone. Boise State without any more timeouts They're remaining. Out of timeout. That is Chris Peterson. He's the offensive coordinator. He will be the head coach come Sunday. Zabransky wants to throw on third down. Has a man complete. Ball comes loose. No catch. No catch. Will Blackman in on defense involved in that defensive play. Right, Ryan Glasper. The free safety basically just put a lick on the receiver there, and he is known. We talked to the coach, and they said, hey, he will just flat out knock you out. And right there, laying it out, and just kind of Dryson James separates the receiver from the football. Dryson James still down after that big, big hit by Ryan Glass. Boy, what an opportunity 
that slipped through the fingers of Dryzen James. James is up and walking off the field. Watch the lick here. We talk about Kiwanuka, but boy, just as Zembranski lets the ball go, the big fella delivering the blow, and you can't throw a better pass under more pressure than Jared Zembranski and then stand in there and take that lick. Boy, you want your receivers to reward you with a big kick. This is the game for Boise State. Zabransky floats it up, has a man, caught inside the 15-yard line, Vinny Peretta. Boy, I tell you, the poise on the part of Jared Zabransky, and then getting the receiver out of Brown, Vinny Peretta. You see it here, just buying some time, moving his feet, and this is as well as you could throw a football. Over the defensive back, outstretched arms over his head, and then inbound to your receiver, Vinny Peretta, and allow him to get out of bounds, saving some clock, a minute 10. You know you don't have any timeout left. Boy, this is this suspense is building here at Boise. On fourth and nine, they pick up 32 yards. For Colorado, you are getting yourself one heck of a football coach in Dan Hawkins. Zabransky throws almost intercepted ray henderson had it and then dropped it well you don't want to gamble when you're trying to squeeze it in you better squeeze it and it better be outside when you try to squeeze it over the middle down inside the red zone you see how things collapse inside so fast balls are tipped linebackers are hidden sometimes because the area is so condensed that as a quarterback you don't see them and all of a sudden you let it come off your fingers and there they are and you're like i never saw it you're just trying to explain it in the film room the next day <clears throat> second down at 10 to the corner of the end zone there's some pushing and shoving and a flag comes down looking for gerard rab and tom o'brien Worried that this one may go against his eagle. No, I think it's going to, and it'll be half the distance down here, and it's going to get uh, give him a fresh set of downs to go along with some penalty yardage. And Boise State inching ever so close to going ahead in this ball game. You see right here, just trying to get a fade route. And Rab, actually, you want to take an outside release so that you can get in the crease behind the corner and the safety. When you release inside, you're basically dead as a receiver. First down and goal. Ball on the five-yard line. Lee Marks behind Zabransky. Zabransky doesn't see the pressure, and he goes down. Nick Larkin came in and sacked Zabransky, and the clock continues to roll. Yeah, and they get Larkin matched up on Lee Marsh, and it's clearly a mismatch having that running back matched up against that uh, big, big defensive lineman. And Zabransky just spikes the ball with 44 seconds remaining. Are you surprised that they gave up a down? Yeah, I, I really am. I mean, in that situation, you're not thinking, you know, as an experienced quarterback, you got to know the golden rule in the side of the two-minute drill is that you cannot take a sack, especially if you don't have any time out. So that way you're not going to burn downs like they just did. Right here, here's the replay. You see the running back, Lee Marks, and he misses. He whips on a big defensive lineman, Nick Larkin, which cost him the sack. But, boy, precious down, wasted for Boise State. They need to get a touchdown from the 12-yard line. Zabransky throws an interception. Interception made by Ryan Glasper, his second of the game. And it looks like it's going to be the Boston College Eagles winning their sixth consecutive bowl game. Boy, you see the happy feet. I think it was a result of the pressure that he got to play before. B.J. Raji in there applying some pressure and they're pushing the pile back into the face of Jared Zembranski. And I told you about messing around. When you're throwing over the middle, you better be sure and it better be somebody wide open because otherwise bad plays happen more than good ones 
in the middle of the field down inside the red zone. No timeouts remaining for Boise State. They cannot stop the clock. Victory formation for the Eagles. They are 37 ticks away from picking up their ninth win of the season. And there is our Capital One player of the game, Will Blackman. Played a little bit of defense. We saw him on special teams, yeah. and he was electric on offense. Yeah, just fabulous in terms of receiving yards today. Five receptions, 144 <laughs> yards and a touchdown. Just phenomenal when he gets the football in his hand. Well, that's going to do it. BC, they do not need to take another snap. They are going to improve to 9-3 on the year. Tom O'Brien's bunch, they have now won six consecutive bowl games. Jared Zabransky and the Boise State Broncos, they fall to 9-4 on the year. Congratulations to the 2005 MPC Computers Bowl champions, the BC Eagles. Heck of a performance. Final score, BC 27, Boise State 21. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For my partner, Andre Ware, for Heather Cox and the rest of our ESPN HD crew, I'm Eric Collins saying so long from Boise, Idaho. Coming up next, let's go to San Antonio and Mike Tirico with the 2005 MasterCard Alamo Bowl. And now we welcome all of you who enjoyed that terrific finish in Boise with Kirk Herbstreit and Aaron Andrews, Mike Tirico. Terrific matchup. The winningest program of all time, Michigan. The fourth winningest program of all time, Nebraska. So familiar to bowls. Very intense start to this game. Nebraska picked up a couple of first downs. Bobble the punch now. Michigan went three and out. This is Corey Ross for the Huskers. Game day, football comes out. 